Hello, how's everybody doing? What's up, guys? Welcome to Classic Cast number 26. We're here with Stay Safe TV. We're here with Tips Out Baby. And we're here with our guest, Sony, formerly known as Sony D. So we're here to talk about PvP, guys. There's a lot that's happened since the last Classic Cast. Uh, it's, it's been a few weeks. We've, uh, I know we've been all over the place. Stay Safe was in Taiwan. I've been in, I was at TwitchCon in Berlin and then Amsterdam and London. And there, there's been a lot. So it's, so it's been a little bit since our last Classic Cast. So we got a good bit to talk about. Some PvP news, some potential beta news, some speculation. And I think we're going to have a really good time. So before we get into all that, um, one thing to mention, we're, uh, we're in the process of working on some things, some exciting things for Classic Cast that's going to come the next month or so. We have uh, we have some merch that we're working on. A lot of people have been asking about you know classic cast T-shirts and uh, just some just some cool stuff that we can do. And uh, we started the process on that. In addition to some other stuff. So yeah, Pog Pog you yeah exactly of course. So, so yeah, uh, we're gonna finally be doing some of that stuff. I know it's been it's a year and a half and we don't have any merch yet. So <laughs> finally we're finally gonna get the ball rolling on that. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's something that's going to be pretty exciting. So maybe by the next episode, next couple of episodes, we'll we'll be able to officially release it. So yeah. something to look forward to. Real quick, let's go ahead and uh, let's talk to Sony a little bit. Let's introduce Sony. Sony, do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, how you got into WoW, where you got started, when you started playing vanilla? You're you're yeah. you were season three rank one, is that right? In Burning Crusade. Uh yeah, in season three, I was the number one warrior in the world. For a yeah. while with uh, oh, Vinruki wow. and Soda, and we were like the top three on Arena Junkies, basically back when their world rankings existed for all like collaborative two v two, three v three, five v five rating. Mm -hmm. It was Soda up top, Vinruki, and then me. Right. So that was that's that's where I guess I your claim to fame, popularity or whatever you want to call it. I made some Warcraft movie montages that were pretty dope with some Disharmonium Undyne and stuff. But um, yeah, I've been playing I've been playing WoW since since vanilla. A little bit before BGs came out. There you go. So you know, when when did they take down Arena Junkies? I used to love reading Arena Junkies, man. That was a great website. It was it was actually only recently. It was like no. it was like it was in Legion. Yeah, because Vanguard's was running it. He had to shut it down. Oh, Vanguard's was, was running Arena Junkies? Yeah, Vanguard's Vanguard's was actually like the last head admin for Arena Junkies and he was like, Alright, well fuck this, I'm not getting paid for it or like whatever and no one was really helping him do anything, so they just had to shut it down. I, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't realize he was the one running arena junkies actually eventually i don't know if he was i don't know if like he was always running it but i think eventually it kind of just like trickled down to him oh okay okay yeah so but, yeah um your vanilla experience you you you, you told me before experience. yeah you told me before that you were you started playing pretty early on like before the the honor system was even put in right uh like before patch yeah. 1.4 so a few months before that probably would have been early 2005 uh what, what's your experience there um so yeah i started playing wow started leveling up a night elf shadow priest got him like 42 then i went horde on my torn warrior the same sony digital um leveled him to 60 and i think like around the level like 35 battlegrounds came out so i wasn't even 60 when the ranking system came out well because the ranking system came out before bgs right mm -hmm. right yeah. just a little bit before but back then like nobody really knew what the hell was going on so nobody grinded rank in world pvp or anything like that so i think we only really saw like rank 14s once bgs came out but um yeah i, I was uh i got to rank eight on my warrior got rank 12 on a shaman that i bought and then that got hacked and <laughs> taken away from me and i didn't have the password or anything so i lost access yeah, to that right. and um i would have i would have pushed a lot higher rank but obviously parental restrictions back then kind of sucked ass so yeah, wasn't able to do much, but um, that was a bit of my classic experience. Rated Molten Core, BWL, ZG, uh, AQ40. Got a little bit into Nax, but didn't really couldn't didn't have the time to do that because my mom wouldn't let me. So yeah, yeah true. I, I remember back in the day, <laughs> uh, we used to have dial up at my house, and so if I was like in a dungeon or trying to do anything really, and my mom called a friend of hers or a friend called my mom, like internet's out made it very hard to get anything done <laughs> yeah do you, do you guys you guys remember like the first time we got cable i don't know when you guys got cable dude, but like oh, when i got cable, it was like it was revolutionary like internet yeah. was so fast once we got cable it was sick felt good i, I remember yeah, definitely. I, I'm, I'm trying to think back like whenever i first started playing wow uh i think i think by the time that i was playing wow i had dsl i think i had dsl at that point so i was good for wow 
but I remember whenever I was playing Dark Age of Camelot, I had like Kmart, Blue Light Internet, I had Net Zero, and we always had these these discs that you can go get at, at Kmart or wherever, and it was like, oh, like 15 hours free. So what, <laughs> what I would do what? is I would keep a dial-up internet, and I would keep making accounts for like 15 free hours, so that I would just cycle through <laughs> and just like have free internet. It was super slow, and people would call and like disconnect us all the time, but it was super, super funny, yeah. Wait, what was DSL? I, I I remember hearing about that, but I don't think I ever like I don't think we had DSL. I think I had dial up. DSL dial -up and cable. DSL was like the first high speed internet, right? Yeah, yeah. Basically, it was it was yeah. in between in between dial up and cable, it was DSL. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, or maybe yeah. something else. Chat chat knows it's something else too, apparently. I, I didn't know that. Not dick sucking lips, it can't be that. <laughs> yeah. There's no way it's that one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah. So I remember growing up in elementary school, I had a rich friend, and we used to go to his house and play flash arcade games on his on his dial up or on his DSL internet. It was badass. Then I was always depressed when I had to go back to my place and use dial up. It felt really bad. <laughs> yeah, dude. A freaking American Online logo slowly running. Oh, dude. never quite reaching there, dude. Oh my god. Hey, Stacey, can you do me a favor real quick? For some reason, you're I have you at two hundred percent. Can you turn your Discord up just a little bit? Uh, yeah. Let me figure that out. Okay. Yeah, for some reason you're just a, you're just a tad quiet for us, but um, but yeah. So <clears throat> you played Sony. You played back in back in the day. You you know you, you did BWL. Yep. You rated. Uh, you ranked. You, you said you got to rank thirteen. Or sorry, rank twelve. You didn't quite get to thirteen. Um, no. But for you, like you've been a big fan of classic and kind of been pushing for classic ever since they really changed the game back in Cataclysm. So yeah, I started. I actually started like. I actually started playing private servers in Cataclysm. Wait, first uh, when Phoenix came out, which was mm -hmm. like I don't even know, eight years ago, eight nine years ago. I and I spent my entire senior year of high school summer landing with my best friend and my brother, and we all just leveled to sixty. And like I never ever really wanted to go back to retail after that. Like I came back to Mop a little bit, played that, and then with Wad, I found out that I found out about Twitch. And I was like, okay, maybe I'll stream, but. What's crazy to me is like I was never actually passionate about retail since mm. Wrath, like ever, ever. Like yeah. since I came back to since I came back to WoW, I had always wanted classic, and I, I streamed Nostalgia for a bit, but then I got you know I got a warning that I couldn't uh, stream it anymore, so <laughs> <Right>. I got <laughs> yeah. quickly shut down. Um, but yeah, man, I've been a huge advocate for classic since I started streaming four years ago. And it's mm -hmm. like crazy to see that it's finally happening. Yeah. Like really, really crazy. So when, um, when you say since Wrath, like you haven't had the same passion for the game since Wrath, were you, was that including Wrath? Like Burning Crusade, after Burning Crusade, you kind of lost the passion for it? Or after Wrath, you lost the passion for it? After Wrath. After Cataclysm Wrath. was like, Catac Cataclysm was cool, but I feel like every expansion since then, it was just like a, it was a vanity aspect that kept bringing me back to the game. Like, oh, I got some cool mounts. I got some like cool yeah you know armor and shit but like really nothing else nothing that like there were moments in legion that was fun there were moments in wad that were that were fun but nothing kept me uh attached to the game for as long as like tbc or classic did or even wrath right well yeah there was definitely a transition between like traditional rpg style gameplay and vanilla tbc and the like i would say like the first half of wrath and the more like collectionist style gameplay mounts pets which yeah. is what they use to incentivize a lot of content today right mm-hmm 100%. Yeah, re Retail WoW is basically a dress-up game nowadays. <laughs> like, that's, that's how it feels a lot of times. It's like, even, so so even amongst, like, streamers, like, we always talk about, oh, like, you know, I want to I wanna stream WoW, I want to play WoW, and somebody's echoing, I'm not sure who it is, but, uh, you know, you want to you wanna play WoW, you want to stream WoW, and then what do I do? Go do transmog runs, go do mount runs, stuff like that, and that's fine, right? I mean, that's essentially, like, if you want to do that, that's basically yeah. like you're doing just chatting, right? At that point, you're basically doing just chatting. So it's like, why not go do just chatting? It's like a whole thing. Um, yeah. The problem is for me and for, uh, you know, I would guess for you guys and I would guess for the overwhelming majority of people who are excited for classic and, and that's the kind of game that they want to play, that's just outright boring. <laughs> like it's not it's not yeah. something that particularly interests them. Like just running around like collecting mounts and stuff. Like sure, it might be cool in classic to get like a, a mount or something here or there, but it's like a, that's like a side quest. The main quest, build up your character, get strong, get good loot, all that stuff, and, and actually like play the game and, and, and develop that. The the vanity stuff should be on the side, not the main thing. And that's kind of the problem with Retail WoW right now for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And go ahead, Sonny. 
No, I was just going to talk about the competitive aspect too, because like obviously there's like progressing, progressing your character and all this and all that. But like when you really dive into the competitive like PvP aspect of the game, it's just progressively gotten much, much worse. Mm -hmm. And whenever I whenever I try to get back into that with like current expansions, whether it was Legion, BFA, or WAD, like class design in general has just gotten worse. So it's it's like you were saying, stay safe. It's like gone away from traditional RPG uh, feeling in every aspect of the game. So not just like your general like you can progress your character, but like there's no RPG feel in PvP either. Because like warriors just feel like every other class. Like rogues feel like mm -hmm. it's just like it, everything's meshed. It's just a it's a confuckle of not a whole lot of fun dude that's actually really interesting hearing that from like a pvp like player's perspective i don't think we've ever had like a super high in pvp run have we uh so. actually no not yet uh not somebody who's ranked really high in uh in retail arenas or, or in arenas i guess um yeah because like it's really interesting <laughs> to hear you say that you would think that pvpers would kind of uh, i guess would have kind of steered more towards like the homogenization and would like the idea of all classes having interrupts and stuff like that it sounds like uh, you're not a big fan of that kind of stuff. Well, so it's it's become that, but they've they've managed to strip away inherent class identity. Because mm -hmm. like at the start of BFA, I think you guys might have heard like warriors were supposed to be the big two handed, you know, wielding big chunks of damage at a time, and it was literally that for a week and a half, and then Blizzard was like, okay, no, fuck this, we're going back to just dots and like deep wounds damage, and yeah, so yeah bleeding them out and stuff. Yeah, and bleeding him out, and since then, it's just like it's been slowly just trickling away from any sort of class design, mm -hmm. um, class I, identity. So I think one of the big things, and and we've had Kevin Jordan on before, but like you know, Kevin Jordan, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, you know, he, he streams on Twitch. I think he actually changed his Twitch name to Kevin Jordan at this point. Um, but yeah, he's he's the original Vanilla WoW class designer. He 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 was literally in charge of building every class in in Vanilla WoW. Uh, he worked on the team from vanilla burning crusade to wrath and then he was gone he wasn't working at blizzard anymore and i don't think it's coincidence that you saw such a big difference in class design uh from the original trilogy the the first three games to cataclysm and onward uh kind of like tip said it got a lot more homogenized everything kind of came together as like okay this class everything had a template right okay we're not going to play a spec or a class. We're going to play a spec and a, for example, a rep paladin is no longer a paladin. A rep paladin needs to fit in the mold of a DPS. So he needs an interrupt. He needs this. He needs this. So that way we can have this guy go into an arena team and he'll fit into that role in the arena team, uh, more proper, like, you know, the right way. So, yeah, I think that's fine on paper and, and it's like super optimized and it like looks cool, I guess looks really neat. But the problem is, is that takes away from like the soul of the game and it's, it's just not good <laughs> like it's just outright I, I don't know for me like if i want to play an mmo rpg if you're taking rpg elements out of the game then it's not really the same game anymore uh and i, and I know there's a lot of pvpers and, and and sony i'm sure you know this too like there's there's plenty of guys who thought like kata wasn't that bad or or miss was really good pvp and, and i'm sure there's a lot of people who who, who think that they, they really like the pvp and mists uh but from for me personally you started to see things as you started to see things move away more and more as far as like class fantasy style or perspective it, it took away from what the game was so yeah yeah perhaps. absolutely i i think like the easiest way to balance a game is to only have one class right if if everyone is exactly the same then the game is perfectly balanced the problem with that is that it's just not fun like right balance is vanilla boring wow, balance is boring yeah like <laughs> vanilla wow Everyone was so different and it wasn't perfectly one to, and we've talked about this a lot. It wasn't mm -hmm. perfectly one to one to one to one balanced, um, but it was more like rock, paper, scissors balanced. Everything had a hard counter. And yeah, like, but it was fun to stomp people that you countered. And at the same time, it was fun to maybe struggle and beat the guy that was supposed to counter you. So that was rewarding. Right. It was rewarding both ways. Um, it sort of like instilled fear in you. Like if you're a warrior and you're out running around the world and you see a mage, you're like, ah, oh, crap. So like there was that there was that rpg element but yeah like everyone was so unique and mm -hmm. i think that's what made it special yeah and like one of the great things about vanilla class design was that it, it complemented or supplemented the item design so well wherever classes had gaps you could fill those gaps in with interesting items and like for example as a warrior you don't have a reset so use a goblin rocket helm instead um you know you, you can't you get kited a lot so maybe you should try using goblin rocket boots mm -hmm. um yeah, so you stuff like that. that, like, 
Yeah, sorry. I just saw that picture and I was like, wait, what? No, uh, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but no, yeah. So like you, you have different ways of making up your class's weaknesses, but there's always trade-offs and that's what makes it so interesting. You know, you're not going to be able to use Goblin Rocket Boots without sacrificing some stats and stuff like that. It actually reminds me a lot of MOBAs. Like, I don't know if anybody in the chat plays Dota 2 or Sony, if you play Dota 2, but like in Dota, um, you know, there's a character named Anti-Mage and Anti-Mage has a blink ability. And there's a lot of classes in Dota that would do a lot better if they had a blink ability, but they don't have one. But they can, you know, purchase a blink dagger from the shop and it's an item that allows them to blink essentially. So um, it takes up an item slot. So again, there's like a trade off there, but the ability to acquire certain items to kind of make up and compensate for some of your class's weaknesses, but with a counter is like really, really interesting uh, class design, I think. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what people would crave in PvP. They miss being able to counter, you know, it's mm -hmm. and there's not once again, it's just it's just it's going over the same things, but basically there's there's none of that in, in current WoW. And there hasn't been since Mop. There was a little bit of it in WAD, but just it's just been getting progressively worse. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking a lot about PvP, uh, and, and something I want to hit on that and, and again, it's been a really long time since we've done the last class cast, and we're going to be getting uh, a lot more consistent with these soon. I mean you know stay safe got sick i got sick we were out of town we were flying all over the place but uh it has been a while since this news it's been a couple of weeks but uh i do want to touch on this the classic pvp content plan uh so i'm going to go ahead and pull this up here it should show up just in a second there we go um so yeah i want to i want to talk about this real quick we talked about in the last classic cast how they explained uh that they want to do the six phases there's no pvp um and, and where we kind of see PvP fitting in. Uh, or actually, no, sorry, this wasn't the last one with Quissy. This was the one with Nano where we talked about it. Um, but since then, for those of you guys who don't know, um, we talked about you know the potential of maybe them putting in in phase two, maybe putting it in phase three, putting it in the middle, or in an ideal world, maybe even spreading out PvP release throughout the course of uh, throughout the course of Vanilla Wild, throughout the course of a, the cycle of the server. And I think we all thought that was kind of unlikely, but that's actually what they're going to be doing. So pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, I, I know I know I'm pretty excited about that. Um, just to look over this real quick, as you can see, this is from from the classic Wowhead website, by the way. They did a really good job of uh, laying this out, kind of fitting in the content release with PvP release and, and making a nice little chart. So we're going to use that. We're going to look at that. Um, <clears throat> So you can see phase two, honor system and PVP rank rewards. Phase three, Alterac Valley and Warsong Gulch. Phase four, Arathi Basin. Uh, and then they're pos I, I, I think, I think uh, Wowhead put this in on their own. Like if they want to do PVP vendor updates, maybe they should do it in phase five. But uh, so we what, can is that, what does that mean? Updating from previous like 1.0? The, the uh, original PVP, PVP gear. 1.12? Yeah, the original PvP gear to the, uh, I think it was the next patch uh, stat update, um, but but they're not going to be doing that. So yeah, that's there are straight to items. There's like the spell pen ring. I think that should be added on to the uh, oh, and like spell blade. Oh, the um, the rep rewards are gonna get are gonna get added. Yeah, in. the rep that's rewards going to get added in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's maybe the rep maybe, maybe different because didn't um didn't like the spell power sword come later as well like there was like the spell power sword the dagger because at first it was just that's that's true yeah but i think based on the the language in the post it looks like those will be coming they're just um, bringing everything early on yeah, yeah those, the, the items you're talking is... about were added in 111 i think but yeah mm -hmm. it's like tip said it sounds like those are going to be in pretty early mm -hmm. yeah. so that's a super that's actually a super debatable topic because like we're getting 1.12 items before bwl even comes out right if right. you get rank 14 hypothetically Actually. yeah if you get rank 14 so, hypothetically before wl you're going to be pumping insane amounts of damage you're going to be having items that are better than everything in bwl and on par with aq40 items mm -hmm. so the so fastest like, you can go from rank 1 to rank 14 is three months exactly if you're bracket one every week and that's that's like dream scenario very rare for people to do that so if phase two the open world pvp ranking phase lasts two months i I, would, I think it'll last around two months um it'll be a month or a month and a half or two months after bwl is out right before you start seeing rank 14s um i which think isn't, it isn't like even, as big of a deal yeah what you no nah, really i think that's still a huge deal because rank 14 gear is better than bwl gear it's on par with nax well what stay like, safe rank... is saying what stay safe is saying that it's going to be unlikely that you'll see many people getting grand marshal before the release of uh 
BWL. BWL. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, it won't yeah, impact prog progression or server first or stuff like that. Like, yeah. What you see on private servers is you see entire guilds going into BWL with an entire roster of rank 14s, right? Which is a bad thing, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. yeah. A bad thing? Why is that? It, I think it's bad. Um, if guild, it's it's bad for like a server progression if guilds are going in like the top guild is going into BWL like launch day with an entire rank fourteen roster. I think that's bad. I think that like undermines uh, the difficulty of the content. So if you if it's impossible to be rank 13, 12, 13, 14 until a month or two months after BWL comes out, I think that like uh, I, think uh, I, I, I I think that preserves the difficulty of BWL a little bit. Yeah. But that's still up in the air because right now they've con they've confirmed basically that 1.12 items are coming out before BWL, right? And even if you so, get rank 10, like rank 10 made shoulders and boots are best in slot till next, right? So like there's a yes. lot of items yeah. still that are going to be like just stupidly broken before even Nax comes out. Like we're not even talking about like progressing through BWL because if you have rank 14 progressing into AQ40 for some classes... That's still going to be insane. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like even just having the weapons on a majority of your DPS or like stacking Fury Warriors and a majority of rogues, like you're going to be clearing content so fast. And you're saying like a top guild shouldn't do that or it's bad for them to do that. But dude, they don't give a fuck. Like why would they care? They're there to do it as fast as they can. You know what I mean? Like just to, hey, we cleared it first. You know, like mm -hmm. who cares that we cleared it with rank 14 gear? So yeah. I think that, uh, and, and this is this is a concern that I brought up in in my video talking about the update i talked about how basically exactly what you're saying uh if they have the 1.12 gear in from the beginning and that gear is kind of put in to compete with like aq40 gear i i 100 percent believe this i 100 percent believe that the aq40 gear or sorry that the uh uh the the second set of pvp gear that came out the updated pvp gear it was yeah. it was almost done too late so whenever they go and they update it to to be like on par with aq40 gear then that's it fine. Was done, sorry, it, it was done too late in the original. In retail, release? in retail vanilla. Yeah. When did it come out in retail? Sorry, I don't mean to. In the next patch. In the next patch. Oh, really? Yeah. So it probably should then have come the out. Why the Yeah. Why are they bringing it out before? The that's. So well, so the thing that's going on basically is, and, and this is like the whole concept of like progressive minimization, and and we've talked about this a lot too. Is, uh, like there's different parts of progressive minimization, and how does Blizzard want to approach it? Do they want to have the the newest gear available they like like a lot of people say this okay progressive itemization for those of you guys who don't know progressive itemization is the concept of as the game comes out they're going to add new items into the game they're going to update items as they they would have been in vanilla to, to match the content and all that stuff uh what i i think at this point how every how, how every update and how everything's kind of gone uh, I think it's most likely that what's going to happen is they're going to release items as they were released, but they're going to be released in their uh, in their latest state. So kind of similar to, and, and there's been private servers that this before too. Um, like obviously like NOST, NOST is kind of like the big, uh, whenever people talk about private servers, they talk about NOST. And uh, NOST did a lot of things that were not exactly right. And we've had Nano on this show before and, and he's talked about it too. Like uh, gear not being updated in the right patch or whatever and then they find stuff out later and it's been fixed later on and then there's also been other private servers that come out and said whatever and we're going to have like the newest version of the gear just available from the beginning and um just kind of have it as is i think that's probably the way that blizzard is going to end up approaching it given all the news that we've gotten because they've said they want to go with the newest yeah. version of the gear on release um i think that so, yeah so, so go ahead Cesar. I, I, I was going to say um all of like the original rank 14 weapons were updated in patch 1.6, which is the BWL patch. So I think it's less of a deal if like uh, phase two lasts two months or two and a half months, as long as you don't have rank 14s going into BWL. The the 111 gear that was added was the, were the he, the rank 14 healing weapons, the healing mace and the off hands, and also the caster uh, main hand off hand combos. I think that's it. Um, those are like the big problems, and those are considerably yeah, better agree. than everything in BWL. And a lot of I think I think in AQ40 as well. I think if if we refer back to uh, the Wowhead thing that you showed, I mm -hmm. I think it'd be a really good compromise if they choose to add that stuff in Phase Five. Now, what that means is if I'm a caster and I rank early in, uh, in Phase Two or Phase Three or Phase Four, and I get rank 14, that would suck for me. That would suck for me because if I want those uh, caster weapons or if I'm a healer and I want the healing mace, I have to re-rank right in Phase Five. So that would mm -hmm. suck a lot, but I think that's probably the most balanced way to approach it.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, mean, uh, I think that's certainly one way of looking at it too, um, because uh, Staff of Shadow Flame is is uh, is there a better combo than Staff of Shadow Flame? Just having the Staff of Shadow Flame outright in BWL in one point six patch is there is there a better combo with like Azure Song Mage Blade or anything for more no, spell I, power? I think that's abyss. Now, okay. the, the, if if we had the one eleven rank fourteen uh, spell blade in offhand, that would be considerably better than the Staff of Shadow Flame. But yeah, mm -hmm. other, otherwise, uh, Shadow Flame's best. And that's right. partially the, sorry, uh, just real quick. That's partially the reason why, um, I guess phase three is so interesting right now and phase two mm -hmm. right now, as it stands, every class wants to rank to 14 to my understanding. There yeah, might I be know, a few classes that yeah. don't, but, but every class right now, if, if they keep the same phase content release schedule, every class wants to rank to 14 because the, the gear that you get as early as you get it is just ahead of so much and it will stay relevant for so so long including the blue pvp sets by the way like the yeah. epics are one thing but dude yep. get to rank 10 which isn't even that hard like relatively speaking and or get to rank freaking eight you'll have four out of six blue uh blue pieces like that's those are still really really good too well so that's mm -hmm. what i was saying because like for mages you can get ranked 10 really easily before bwl comes out and you you have best in slot shoulders and boots all the way until yeah. next yeah so that's one example but talking about progressive itemization, what's interesting is like, if we're just getting the final state of a majority of items right off launch, aren't aren't like a number of just random world drop like wrath pieces also best in slot for casters? Like if you get a rolled like wrath, like fiery wrath, like cape or something, isn't that just like best in slot? Like a few a few items, the way they're itemized, like they just have like yeah, absurd true. amounts of plus shadow or plus fire damage. Right. That is true. So it's like, yep. I, I feel like if, if Blizzard's not what's weird about this classic launch actually the more i think about it is like we're getting a progressive content thing but we're not getting any progressive itemization and if we're not getting progressive itemization then it's just like you're basically making content easier well a majority of content easier they're gonna I be agree. doing it well they're gonna be doing it partially right so it's like the like the world drops that aren't in the game at the beginning aren't gonna be in the game at the beginning well, so what, yeah, wait, I, I guess I guess rather than as, as, that's my understanding, they're right? Doing progressive item additions, which is yeah. like I think that's their goal. Yeah. Oh, progressive item additions. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah. you know, whatever, um, like any sort of plans, items, whatever, whatever drops later on. Uh, at least that's my understanding is that they're not going to put it in at the beginning. But if something gets updated, so now there's certain items that are concerns, right? Like Savage Gladiator's chest is is probably one of the most commonly talked about ones because the uh the savage gladiator chain vest from brd the mail the mail chest uh from brd is like you know the exact stats off the top of my head it's like two crit um i think two crits some agility strength it's it's really really good is basically the point uh it ends up being as good as or it ends up being basically the best chest piece in the game for a physical dps until aq40 uh, if you're a warrior, you would want the like annihilation chest uh, there. That's that, that's like the first thing that is better if you're a DPS warrior. So certain items like that end up being a big concern because you can go into BRD and get that in your mid fifties and then not have to upgrade it at all for over a year. Uh, some people might like that, right? Uh, but that's not really. I, I don't necessarily think that's good to be able to have something there. It's kind, of, um, it's kind of taken away from the RPG element too. Like we were discussing yeah. off call earlier, like where yeah. you're not, what's it's going to defeat the purpose of like, yeah, dude, we're going to hit BWL. I'm going to get my tier two chess piece, you know, and that's going to be the best item because it's the most recent up to date content. But then you're just going to have people like running into Nax, like we were talking about with the PP gear earlier with like blue shoulders, you know, and like, you're not going to replace that with tier three unless you're like PVPing, but even then like ring four T shoulders are probably better. So it's like, it just it makes this really weird combination of gear happen and like character yeah. progression happen. Vanilla uh, gearing, you're right, is really weird. Like there are abyss pieces for for every class from like 12 and 13. You might have like your abyss weapons might be 14. You'll have like a trinket or maybe a neck from like a dungeon that might be abyss for a long time. Like you 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 get your gear from all over the place. You might have a couple right. like of shadow wrath pieces and then some raid pieces thrown in. It's you might have a couple crafted boes that are abyss mm -hmm. or like edge like lionheart helm, which are, yeah, yeah stuff like that. Yeah. Like, your gear is just from all over the place um no, no no that's that's for sure like the vanilla thing like warriors yeah. are just like that like yeah like lionheart helmets best in slot until i'm pretty sure nax it just it's a, it's a great helmet but what i'm saying is with the current itemization plan that they have 
it's going to it's going to cause even more than that more of that than we even saw in the original version of the game it's that's kind of what I yeah absolutely it's, yeah it's, it's going to make already prob- yeah yeah so i'm just curious like hopefully we can keep voicing this and actually get some more um just yeah. clearance on what's actually happening cuz Mm-hmm. I like this guy, dude. I like this guy. Man. Well, and, and here's one <laughs> thing. Here's one thing to look at, and, and this is something that Blizzard has to deal with that no private server has had to deal with yet, is that you have literally tens of thousands of people who are doing every single breath, every single step you take, whatever you do, and they're putting it under a mi- microscope and trying to analyze it to like the nth degree. I mean, I know that's what we do. That's what a lot of people watching the show do. I know that's what a lot of people watching our streams and everything do. Um, and it's really interesting because I've talked about classic meta versus retail vanilla meta versus private server meta. They're all going to be a little bit different. And a lot of the stuff that private servers did wasn't exactly it wasn't exactly Blizz like. They they ended up making custom changes or they made a mistake here and there. And uh, you wonder like how how much of an impact does that really have on on how the game works? And I think whatever they end up doing, it's going to be really, really interesting to see um, how the game plays out. I think whatever decision they make, it's so important that they look at how the game plays out and they're ready to whenever, inevitably, they want to release a new set of fresh vanilla servers because that's that's kind of another discussion. But at the same time, if they yeah. don't release fresh vanilla servers, then people are just going to go back to private servers. So surely they're going to do that. Um Whenever they release a new set of fresh vanilla servers, they can look at it and say, you know what? We made this mistake. We think it would be better if Savage Gladiator Chain got updated in Phase 5, right? Something yeah, like that's that. Kinda, uh, this is kind of like a little bit off track, but like, what do you what do you think about ex- experimental, experimental like servers? Like where vanilla ends, but instead of it just ending at Nax Ramus, like we get more content not just like an alternate timeline but like what if we what if they introduce like rated battlegrounds and like aesthetic re- rewards with that or like like things like that you know what i mean well i, I don't think, think they if a fine idea if they ever did like progressive content after nax like post nax content uh, i don't think they should add new features um i i also i think that they TBC? well i don't think they should add new features i think they should go tbc that's the first priority uh, and if they ever decide to make a set of servers that are like post nax content servers or anything like that, uh, it, it shouldn't be new features. It should only be new content that's in the same vein as vanilla. And uh, the big concern is going to be power creep. So like if you if you add because I, I do think part of me does think this would be cool if they did this in addition to like after they already had Burning Crusade and all that other stuff. If they went through and said, you know what, we started working on Karazhan before almost uh, before a lot of the other content, John Stath told us this. Before a lot of the other content, we started working on Karazhan. So put Karazhan in. It's a 40-man raid in vanilla. Put in Caverns of Time. You go into Caverns of Time, you can jump, 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 glitch, and go all the way down there. That's the same Caverns of Time that's in the game yeah. than you go into in Burning Crusade. You can look in the game files, and you can find Black Morass, and that's in the game. You go to Hygel, that's the same Hygel that you can glitch into. So I, I do think that the concept of post next content... Uh, assuming assuming that they already have Burning Crusade and all this stuff, this is a conversation for way down the road. Uh, I do think it's something that could be cool, but uh, how much do they, how much effort do they want to put into that, and and like what's the payoff going to be for them? I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, I. So for me, like my point of view is they didn't add this stuff originally because they thought it wasn't a good fit for vanilla, for vanilla WoW, mm-hmm. right? So I'm like very hesitant to do that. The next question is like. Do do I the, the one of the one for me one of the key features of Vanilla WoW or key selling points of Vanilla WoW is that we know exactly what we're getting. Like I really like the game design from back then, and I'm not so big of a fan of modern game design. And so, do I trust 2019 Blizzard to make good additional content for Classic WoW? Honestly, no. Um, so I'm I'm happy with it being exactly what we know it to be and moving on to TBC. The other mm-hmm. thing, like you mentioned, power creep is a big deal. Like like Nax. Power creep is already crazy big. In fact, a lot of, and I'm sure tips you can add on this, like a lot of vanilla WoW PVPers will tell you like the the best or most favorite phase of vanilla WoW PVP is with BWL gear. And then after that, people slowly start getting more and more glass cannony. I'm um, like during Nax, people can just like start globaling each other, yeah. right? Or not not quite that much, but it, people become really big glass cannons. Mm-hmm. And so 
like a lot of PVPers will tell you that the most balanced era of vanilla WoW, as far as PVP goes, is with BWL or, or maybe even ZG gear. Mm -hmm. Damn. I'm excited yeah. to experience that again. I, I don't even remember what that was like because I was a keyboard turning, you know, right. shitter. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> and, and, and that's the that. case. That's the case for a lot of people. I mean, and we talk about this all the time, right? It's we, this game was 14 years ago. And if you look at a lot of people who are excited for Vanilla WoW, it's people who uh, maybe played Vanilla, but they did they, they feel like they didn't get to finish, right? I, in, in like, I, I've done everything on private servers now, uh, except for rank. I haven't ranked to 14. Um, but uh you know it's it's like i didn't go and i didn't kill kelthuzad I, I didn't rank to 14. There, there's stuff that i didn't do that i want to go back and finish that i want to uh that i want to get done there's a lot of people that feel that way there's a lot of people who started playing right at the end of vanilla or in burning crusade i mean huge like burning crusade and wrath were, were huge periods of growth for a lot of people and I, I would say the majority of people who are still playing wow today are probably not people who started playing in vanilla or burning crusade it's probably mostly people who started playing wrath cataclysm and on um so I think a lot of people excited for classic are people who never experienced it. And man, everybody talks about like the golden age and you know, all these like old, like war torn veterans are talking about like vanilla. Wow. I want to go experience that for myself. Like, what's the deal? Like, is it really that yeah. good? So, uh, I, I think that's the big appeal for classic for a lot of people. I, I think it's so interesting when I hear like people who started in wad say that they love world of warcraft and they're like yeah dude i love this game like legion was great too and like i've even recently talked to some like rank one people in bfa mm -hmm. who were just like came out of the woodworks and they're like dude this expansion's great for pvp i'm having a blast and i'm just like what like when did you start playing he's like oh i just started like you know a few months ago i'm like okay wow so it's it's gonna be interesting seeing those players come back to vanilla and see one how they even play and two, if they really enjoy the game, because I was actually having random conversations in a trade chat the other day, just about how like, dude, are you like, are you hyped for classic Sony? I was like, yeah, man, I'm really looking forward to it. And they were just like, I just, I don't know if, I don't know if I'm going to dig the slow paced action of it. And I'm just like, well, personally, I, I, it's more like chess rather than this, like just constant spammy buttons, you know, like shitstorm of PVP. It's, it's, it's more thought out. I think anticipation had a bigger uh, mm -hmm. role in pvp back then like anticipation knowing other classes abilities whereas nowadays you can get by without you know without knowing a lot of that like there's a lot of people at 24 2400 rating where mm -hmm. they're just like they're just doing their dps rotation that's all you have to yeah do. it's, you it's the same rotation like, you, don't have to interrupt. Yeah. you don't you don't have to interrupt dude i i played a 50 percent dampening game there's a clip somewhere on my channel i played a 50 percent dampening game i kicked the shaman five times at 15 percent hp he mm -hmm. didn't die he didn't i kicked him i'm interrupting his Dude. primary like way to yeah. keep himself alive and he didn't die and that's an issue that means like interrupts don't do anything like you know right. what, where's the skill left in in pvp if that's not even you know helping you kill somebody so did i remember I, I was doing uh i raged pretty hard at, for me i'm not super ragey but like i raged pretty hard for me uh whenever this was like early bfa we were doing arenas and there was a shaman who it was the same exact thing. Like we were just beating on him for like five minutes straight. Oh, it was a 2v3. It was a 2v3 and his partner disconnected. And he's just sitting there and we're like, we're both interrupting him. We can't, we literally can't kill the guy. He just, he's taking no damage and he just starts casting like instant heals. I don't even understand. I still to this day don't understand what happened. He That's just for, an issue. It's, it's yeah. Retail is just, it, it's so annoying issue. to like, me. Even in, even in game design, like where is the mm -hmm. skill discrepancy? Like you're, you're instantaneously casting on a ranged class that should be healing to keep himself and his teammates alive when you have a melee who can only damage you up close beating your face in but it's not doing anything mm -hmm. and it's like that that is that's where that's when you know like it's just gone to shit mm -hmm. this is and gonna sound really stupid happen. and like inarticulate and i'm i'm not gonna like say this the right way but maybe you guys will like feel with me here when i'm pvping in retail wow i feel like I never like chunk anyone. There's so many self heals yes. and absorbs and stuff like that. And vanilla wow, if I pop up a shadow bolt, like he's taken damage. You know what I mean? Yes. Like yeah. it's yes. it's hard to explain that, but no, yeah. you're explaining it perfectly. Better. I think anyone yeah. who plays wow understands that entirely. Like I I also miss running in. You charge. You you press mortal strike. It's on a six second cooldown. Okay, boom. You get a crit. 
50 percent of their hp is gone <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. or like or you don't get a crit okay it's like 15 percent hp it's great you're actually doing stuff and then people actually got to fake their cast because if if you don't fake a cast you get kicked and you're at 30 percent boom that moral strike comes off cooldown that's another 30 percent you're dead like it relied on actually outplaying opponents whereas now it doesn't matter if you kick somebody. It's like, it feels yeah. like you always have a fail safe in, in retail PvP. Yeah, like, like you always have backup. Something goes wrong, you got backup, backup, backup. And like yes. by the time you burn through all of the backups, like 20 minutes have gone by and that's where you have a dampening. But yeah. I'm actually very like, I'm not going to lie, Sony, Sony, I'm very like pleasantly surprised with like your perspective. Um, it's really interesting to hear like a high-end PvP or talk about this stuff. I'm curious based on, you know, your conversations and your community and, and all the other PvPers that you talk to, what's kind of the general... I guess, what's the outlook from the PvP community on Classic WoW? Are people kind of like, eh, you know, looks a little bit slower, not really interested, or are people super hyped? Like, what's, I mean, you know, what's the consensus in the community? So, the like, I was actually watching CD last night, and he brought up a good point that basically, like, if we were, if we time-traveled and all of a sudden we were all just playing Wrath of the Lich King, like, we would bitch about it. Like, the game was, like, you know, like, it was in a good state. Yeah. We had a lot of fun more enjoyable because class identities there and there were moments where you could chunk people and if you kick people it mattered and all this but at the end of the day like it was still there were still a lot of issues with it you know what i mean mm -hmm. but back then it was more enjoyable i think just for the sheer fact that there was a lot more class identity you could chunk people and interrupts mattered cc chains mattered mm -hmm. whereas now it's all just you have fail safe after fa fail safe after fail safe after fail safe 70 percent dampening oh no you're all right you got a little bit more fail safes and then 90 percent dampening okay something eventually dies right and that just creates a very stale experience but a lot of people are actually looking forward to classic pvp because like i like i was saying it was i was i, I saw azale you guys know azale he's a league of legends commentator yeah. yeah he used to be a multi-rank one mlg playing warlock he brought up a good point about world of warcraft in general where it's like you don't have the opportunity to this is gonna sound whatever but artistically express yourself in pvp anymore you don't have like the opportunity to artistically express yourself in any type of play style because it's all just spammy it's all it, there's no azale said this yeah azale tweeted that, something like that that's really good keep going yeah, and um, I just I, I found it really it was really profound when he said that because it's like it's true. The the more mm -hmm. expansions have gone on, the less class identity have that we have, and the less overall in gaming that we there's there's less artistic expression in gaming in general. Like new games that are coming out, and I think that's why a lot of people are looking forward to classic because there's that opportunity to at least express yourself, you know, through your mm -hmm. own unique playstyle. Obviously, streaming and YouTube videos is going to ruin all that because the you know, you can just acquire knowledge very easily. Easily now, you know. You well, just watch I, I wouldn't say warrior. ruin. I wouldn't say ruin. It's not gonna ruin, but more people are gonna be able to adapt really quickly. Yeah, you know what I mean, but people, but people had this like starting in Burning Crusade and stuff too. Like I would say, like not necessarily in vanilla, but I remember there being, like, videos became more and more common, like in the Burning Crusade area or era, and and uh, in, into Wrath. I mean, especially Wrath. But um, no, I I totally I I 110% agree with that, and um. I just so this is something this is something that uh, Kevin Jordan said, and I think he put it really really well. And he was talking about so Kevin Jordan he, he played he he made a Rhett Paladin, and and we made the joke. I always talk about like vanilla Rhett Paladin five head. I always make those jokes. Uh, but he said like a lot of a lot of vanilla PvP, and especially as Rhett Paladin, like because it, it's like more slow paced or whatever. It is a lot like a chess match. So it's like yep. you have to make a lot more calculated decisions with like okay. I think that this guy's going to do this, so I'm going to do this. And it's the concept of like playing uh, reactively versus proactively. And and sometimes you do both, right? Uh, and just depending on the situation, knowing like, okay, if, if he's going to do this to me, I'm going to turn around and do this. Uh, I might play very aggressive and, and um, be very proactive and uh, try and like rush at a guy. And, and yeah. there's so many different ways to play. And I, I, uh, I, I'm not familiar with Azale, but uh, I think specifically using the, the, uh, analogy of like artistic expression I, I think that's actually really really good because if yeah. you watch a lot of vanilla pvp first off you can see certain things play out right like he did this because he's going to set this up for later um and you you can see okay well this guy countered with this so now this guy has to make another decision and he has to change his strategy a lot of times whenever you watch retail pvp it's okay yeah, give this about 15 minutes and this team's going to win. Like at, no at a certain point. Yeah, yeah at a certain point, like you can see the calculations place. and then you know at a certain point, like the buck stops here. Okay, this team's going to win. 
So an example from like a warrior perspective that I can quickly summarize is like preemptively reflecting a death coil. That's a big deal. That's a big ability yeah. back in like Burning Crusade, Wrath yeah. of Lich King. You reflect a death coil, like that throws off everything for three seconds. You can get some big damage in. You can CC the healer. You can do everything. You reflect a death coil now in retail, dude, it literally does not matter. It yeah. does not matter. And that's the most tilting thing because... Yeah, I like to be able to like do cool shit in the video game I'm playing. I don't mm -hmm. like to just do like a cool thing and then it just okay. Yeah, did you guys see that? Yo, clip it. Yo, I did a cool thing. But it only really matters if you kill somebody. In, yeah. You know, because of that, it only matters if there's major impact off of that play. Right. So, yeah, uh, like, to, yeah. I was gonna say to add on to that, like when you said artistic PvP or artistic gameplay, the first thing I thought of there used to be this druid that would run around in vanilla WoW. Uh, in 2006, um, and he uh, he used to always try to find me when I was streaming, and he I play Warlock. He would wear entire uh, Shadow Resistance gear, and like that was his thing. If I saw this Druid, I know he's wearing full Shadow Resistance gear. It was the most <laughs> annoying thing ever. But Dude, that, that was his uh, style. That was his style. If, yeah. I, yeah, like back in 2006, uh, whenever I was also streaming, I, uh, I I had a button set on my keyboard to to switch to a shadow resist set in case I got ganked by like a warlock or a shadow freeze. If I saw somebody coming at me, I would hit it. So then I would have like Lawbringer with like shadow resist accessories and stuff. So uh, yeah, I yeah, I can a, definitely relate a, to that. That's another conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Because like now, so back then you would PVE a lot. You would put in extra time to get these unique items that changed certain situations, like shadow resist gear. Now you put in that time just to be able to compete at at a relative level, right? Because now you need all those absorb trinkets from Crucible of, so of Storms it, just to even survive or like make your class viable. But back then it's just like the level of mm -hmm. impact that getting like full shadow resist or like a few pieces of PvE gear did it is it felt it felt different. Like how mm -hmm. how how would you describe that, right? It, it felt a lot different, but how? What what made it so much more different back then? So I, I would say I would say one of the biggest things is is just the ability to build your character and, and to go and like, you know, obviously you have the, the the RPG aspect of like, okay, my character is working its way through the world, getting to level 60, my character is growing, turning into this, you know, big strong warrior or whatever. Um, you have that, but also like once you get there, it's like, okay, now I get to tweak and I say like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this item on here, I'm gonna do this here, I'm gonna use this trinkets oh if i'm if i'm going into this fight i'll do this like i know one thing i do like if i'm fighting a hunter hunters are, are you know fairly tough for me i i run like frost resist aura as a paladin and i put on a frost reflector trinket engineering trinket and i can tell kind of talking about like playing reactively or proactively like if yeah. i see if i see a hunter you know start to rush me and and you got to get lucky uh, sometimes it's just luck right if i see a hunter start to rush me and i'm like oh he's gonna scatter shot i hit my frost reflector but it's not, it's so, not luck. so like that, I, that's that's reactionary. That's well, well, like, yeah, yeah. But I, I'm saying like I, I don't I don't hit it every time is my point, right? Like right. I, I under I, I acknowledge that oh like I'm a like 600 IQ like vanilla god. I'm like no, <laughs> yeah. like it's just sometimes like you hit it, sometimes you don't hit it. Like that's how it works. So yeah. like I see him coming and I'm like okay, he's gonna scatter shot me. Boom, frost reflector. And then if he takes too long to frost trap me before sh scatter shot and everything, and he does it too fast, or sorry, sorry, if he does it too fast and and he he doesn't take long enough. Then, uh, then the frost, the frost uh, trap will actually reflect onto him because all frost spells yep. will go back. So I end up trapping the hunter instead. So what I can do during that is, I might go and I can try to kill the pet while he's doing that, and then I can repentance him if I'm deep red, and then I have basically like 15, 16 seconds to kill the pet, and then it's a one-on-one. -on -one. If I want to do that, or I can just go ahead and engage on the hunter. But it all kind of depends on on how I want to approach the fight, right? So yeah. it's just uh, yeah, that, just an example. That's what made that's what made classic so great because there's examples yeah. like that for every single class and it wasn't even just so like you were talking earlier i think stay safe about how vanilla was like rock paper scissors right it's not one to one to one balance but instead it's rock paper right. scissors but with certain levels of anticipation and skill within anticipation you can exactly. make like mm -hmm. you know rock beat paper yeah. or whatever like I when would... i'm doing a hunter if i challenging shout the pet right as i'm charging in before he scatters me the pet's gonna break the scatter and i got full uptime now you know and then it's mm -hmm. over so there's like there's just so many little finite things that you can do that yeah. just makes it so. I'm getting so hyped talking about class. Does this usually happen? I know, dude. Usually yeah, yeah, really yeah. hyped talking about classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, I'm I, I, I was gonna it. say like it feels so rewarding to spend a lot of time preparing. Okay, I've got my engineering memes. 
I've got my title charm. I'm the right spec. I have my consumables. I'm going world PVPing. Like it feels good to prepare for something and then it for it to pay off, right? And like like you said, like all that the preparation pays mm-hmm. off. Like you you can beat your counter matchup if you come to the battle prepared, and it feels really really satisfying. Yeah, I agree. And um, it goes back to kind of what Sfan said about building your character and the creativity of being able to build your character. And like when I duel in vanilla, I've got a duel set for every single class. There's I do not do I do not duel two classes the same. And I'm wearing different gear set for every single class. And again, you know, the choices you make, you see them manifest in the duel. And it's very satisfying. It's very satisfying when, you know, you frost reflect an ice trap. It's very satisfying when, you know, you goblin rocket boots uh, a druid trying to get away from you and you're able to keep up and just keep hamstring on because you're using the ZG neck, which reduces the cost of your hamstring and stuff like that. So like, it's just, it's Dude, very- Yeah, satis- that's that's such a small yeah. item, by the way. That's actually a sick example. That And that's like a very, very tiny, tiny item that yeah, could shift it, the momentum. Exactly. And like, you have all of these different items in vanilla and like, they can all change how a fight works. And, and stylistically, you know, you tackle this type of druid this certain way, but another warrior might tackle it another way. And mm-hmm. um, again, it allows you, like, I guess it was Azale who said, it allows you to be artistically, you know, artistically express your play style. Mm-hmm. And it's fun, man. Like the building character thing, like we see it in MOBAs. There's a reason why MOBAs are popular. Obviously a lot of other elements there, but the idea of just going into a match every single time being like, okay, you know, depending on what the enemy's doing, how am I going to build? What items am I going to buy? What skills am I going to get? And yeah. then implementing yeah. that strategy in combat, it's just very rewarding. Mm-hmm. But that's said, that's art- what said, uh, so good. Go ahead. I was going to say, you said artistically build your character. This Going back to this Druid in 2006, uh, he, he was in a Discord channel I was on. And, you know, this is the guy that stacked entire Shadow Resistance gear. And he, in Discord one time, he said, I'm the Warlock killer. Like, that that's what he wanted oh, to do. Shit. Like, his entire LARP was, he was going to run around and just kill <laughs> Warlocks. Arc. Yeah, that's all he <laughs> wanted to do. And, like, you know what? If that if that's how he wants to play it, like, more power to him, you know? that That's who he is. Yeah. <laughs> Was that uh, was it that Evan, was by the way? Or Final Flat. Who is that? I don't know. I don't. I don't know, dude. Uh, just, some, can, just some guy. You just can some guy. find. There's still there's still people like that who play well. Like I think uh, Peekaboo tweeted out a picture one time. Like there was a guy like I think his name was like Pie Vendor or something, and he was in trade chat. <laughs> he was just selling like cold milk. Yeah. And pie. He was all in on that <laughs> being his like character. Just like, just like stupid, like ridiculous stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, something I want to, uh, we, we, we kind of got off on a tangent and we're having a good time. Something I want to talk about real quick is, um, kind of going back to the classic PVP content plan, uh, and, and, and really looking at this, like how, how they want to spread everything out. So one thing that, you know, just to make clear is that the honor system is going to come out with the release of dire mall and uh, what that really means, right? So the honor system and PvP rank rewards are gonna come out in phase two with the release of Dire Maul. Um, what you're gonna see, because there's no battlegrounds, you're going to see that... Um, War is what you're Well, yeah, you're, you're gonna... gonna, have gonna to, well, you're, you're basically well, gonna have to... <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of world PvP. Camp, yeah, you're gonna have to camp flight paths if you really wanna get like top 10 ranking, and there's gonna be a lot of war you know, out in world PvP, obviously, but it's like, I think... I think what's going to suck is if you're behind on the leveling curve come phase two, you're never going to level. Like, well, ever. I, th- I think I, I top think, PVPers are going to be just grinding on Goro so they can get max honor. Well, I mean, you know I, I mean? think I think people will be fine. I, I don't think it's going to be... I, I don't think it'll be that bad. I mean, people obviously did world PVP the whole time, like in, in, in Retail Bro, I'm Vanilla literally too. camping people. Like, but yeah, people. but like you, you got to think about like the percentage of people doing this, right? So and, like, you're gonna start doing that at level 48. Like if players are level 48, now they're eligible to to um, basically you, you can you can um, you can get honor from them, right? Uh, but also like when it comes yeah. to camping flight paths, like you know you land, you're an honorless target for for a little bit, so then they can't kill you right away whenever you land. Uh, so there's there's some like there's some things there's in place that. there. There's that, and then on top of that, like. I think it's like after three kills, like killing someone for a fourth time, it's not even worth yeah. it. Yeah, it's not even worth it. Yeah. Someone else to yeah. Kill. Yeah. So, but not only that, uh, not only all that stuff, I, I what I was kind of trying to get to was talking about like bracket leaders and stuff. Um, mm. in, in Vanilla WoW and in, in Retail Vanilla, or in Vanilla WoW, right? In Vanilla WoW, uh, yep. honor and ranking, there's, it's, it's pretty complicated. Like you have people, so, so you have like honor points, you have ranking points, you have, uh, you're like 
your rank on this, your standing on the server. There's all kinds of different things that factor into it. And generally, on private servers, people have been doing this where there's somebody who's designated as the bracket leader. And the bracket leader handles, okay, these guys are bracket one players, so they need to hit the bracket cap of this much honor every week. And if you're bracket one, it's however many slots based on however many people are competing at a certain percentage. Uh, and then it goes down bracket one, bracket two, whatever. And I'm trying to give like a quick explanation of this whole thing. Um, yeah. So that's much easier to manage whenever you have all the battlegrounds in and you've got the double honor weekend. So, you know, OK, we're going to do this this battleground all weekend. When that's not in the game, I think it's going to be very, very hard to manage brackets early on. So yeah, really people are, it, it's going to be the wild west. Like people are just going to be killing whoever they want. There's going to be choke points on the world. Dire Maul's obviously going to be a big one because that's new in the game on top of there being the PvP system put in. Dire Maul, like is, you can't go in there without a group. <laughs> like it's going to be an absolute bloodbath. It's going to be cool. It's going to be fun. Um, but Dire, so, Dire Maul is going to be nuts for one. And, gotta and also put that Black arena Mountain. to use, dude. Yeah. Gotta put that so, arena to use. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, yeah, I don't I know how is. hard it'll be to manage brackets. I don't think it'll be too hard when it's open world PvP. Like, you still just, if, if you're at bracket cap, you just don't go out in world PvP, right? And well, I think it might be hard for people to, because it's it's more random in terms, it's, it's less uh, it's less systematic. That's what I should say. No, he, so here, here's the thing. Like, let's let's say your bracket cap is uh -huh. 1 million honor exactly. Mm -hmm. And you're at 999, whatever. Like, you're, you're 130 honor away or something, right? Um, people will go finish off their honor by going mm -hmm. and getting a world kill. And you know exactly, okay, if I kill level 51 uh, twice, I'll get this much honor the first time, right. or this much honor the second time. People always round off their honor caps right. by going and getting a couple world kills. So that's that's like pretty planned out. I, I don't think it'll be that hard to plan brackets with uh, during phase well, two, what, honestly. What I'm thinking is it, it's going to be hard to actually get everybody to, to get their proper spots in the brackets. That's, yeah, that's I think, what I think, I think so would be too. difficult. I think, so. I think so too, because it's not, it's not like a, it's, it's hard to quantify every day how much honor you're going to be getting from world PvP. Yeah. Whereas before you could go in battlegrounds and be like, okay, I'm going to play battlegrounds. This many wins. Day. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is how much honor I get per win. But I mean, I thought I correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the only thing that really matters is your overall standing. And then within that standing, there's a little bit of lead way. You know, like it, like with standing one, like you can have a few people at standing one, right? Or wrong? Uh, if if you stack brackets, yeah. If you stack brackets, so yeah. yeah. And that that actually might be hard to do, yeah, because it's gonna be hard for everyone to get in the same mm -hmm. honor field. And if we have like a bunch of big, you know, streamers and players or like sweats playing on the same server, we gotta be in close, you know conversation so I, with other guilds and stuff like that too let's this is how i think it'll play out like let's mm -hmm. say you know after a couple weeks of ranking okay our faction has seven bracket one spots we can only have seven people in bracket one okay so we're we're running running around as a seven man death squad and we're all killing the same targets we're all playing for the same amount of time it's essentially a pre-made still but open world and you're all mm -hmm. playing together you're on a schedule and you're all farming the same honor and even if one of you plays a couple hours less one day, like that person, that person could just catch up on, on, on Monday morning or whatever. Right. So like, I, I don't really see it being a big problem stacking brackets and planning brackets. And I, I think you'll still have bracket one, bracket two, maybe but, bracket three coordinated. Hypothetically though, because all of our experiences recently has been on private servers. It's one server. It's a very tight knit group. Everyone's usually in, in close relations with everybody. Everyone's talking. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to get multiple servers we're going to get multiple sweats, I think, on the same server. And I think it's going to be hard to even... Because, like, yeah, you're going to have that death that death group of seven people in your guild. But who's to say there's not that same group, you know, in another guild that you don't even know about? You know, and you have an honor yeah. war. So you're, you're, yeah, you'll yeah, see for them. Sure, for you, sure, yeah, for you'll, sure. You'll inspect them. You'll inspect them. And you'll be like, wow, they're, they are way too close to us. Like, they're, they're a thousand honor away. Okay, boys, huh, we're farming more. Like, we're not yeah. sleeping tonight. We're farming more. And then you have an honor ward. If, if they want to contest those bracket one spots, then they're going to try to outfarm you. And that's what it is. And typically, like, one one team will concede or the teams will merge and the top fucking Spurgs from both teams will merge into one new pre-made, you know, like death ball pre-made, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's like that's sort of how it plays out. I think it's going to um, be the, really, really the, interesting. The life Spurgs will always rise to the top. And it's mm -hmm. it, what I've seen in the past <laughs> is it, it's, it's typically not just people from one guild. Like, that's how it'll start. Okay, guys, we're going to have a guild pre-made. Yeah. But you'll have merges from other guilds and the spurgs always rise to the top and then the yeah that's that's what it ends up yeah the spurg made exactly yeah <laughs> ba basic physics spurgs always yeah. rise to the top 
Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how it plays out because I, I think uh I don't know. I think but I think both sides of the argument are good. Like it's just gonna be interesting like what, what actually happens. I just think like that's the big thing. It's just gonna be hard to manage everybody, but yeah, because yeah. like I know, like for example, if like my guild, if my guild rolls on the same server as, as Soda Poppin, and we both go horde, mm -hmm. that's gonna be a shit show for honor, you know, war. Like it's yeah. gonna be back and forth nonstop, and I just yeah, I, like competing on the same faction. I, I guess my my biggest concern is like competing on the same faction for honor brackets with too many people can get really really bad. Like mm -hmm. can, you, nobody wants to do that, right? Because it's just like you got you got like fifty people fighting for a top standing. Now the good news, or the, or the silver lining, I guess I should say, is in patch one twelve, they changed the percentage of people that uh, can achieve the top bracket spot. If I remember Wait. correctly, um, so yeah, it went from indeed. it from went point from zero point, to point zero three, right? Yeah, I, I, from point zero point zero one maybe to point zero three, maybe it was point zero two, but point zero two. So that's a little bit more leeway. So you can have more people on your faction get rank fourteen each week than it was you know in, in the earlier patches so silver yes. lining um depending on how big the server population cap is and and how many people are actually in the honor system that week how many have, have you know qualified or whatever <laughs> um that you know that that could be affected so if we have ten thousand population servers and and let's say you know you have ten thousand people just hypothetically um qualifying for, for honor that week you could have 30 people my calculations are right I think 30 people get, uh, is that right? 30 people? Standing one. Is it 30 or three? I'm terrible at math. Don't ask I me. I think it's 30. I think it's 30 can get standing one. Something like that. Well, but so what, that's, what that's also. Yeah. What, what we're going to see, and this always happens, you'll, you'll have people that are like invested in ranking. They'll have a couple alts. And on Monday, they'll be like, they, they need to go get 15 HKs to qualify for the, mm -hmm. the bracket system to expand bracket one and bracket two. And the pyramid sort of trickles down. You'll, you'll have people in trade chat on Monday, you know, right before the reset. Yo, everyone go get 15 HKs. If you haven't already, go get 15 HKs or they'll log into their alts and get 15 HKs to try to inflate the brackets to get one or two more people in there if they possibly can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it is. I guess uh, what I was going to say is like an, another interesting thing to debate would be, I think just this whole 1.12 patch is bringing both a lot of pros, but also a shitload of cons the more we talk about it. You know um, what I mean? Because, well, the way, I, at least for me, like, I, I think with the PvP items, for one, being incredibly overpowered, that just, it's just weird. Like, I don't know if that's going to be good for the state of progression. So, the, go, the, only on, go. Problem, the only PvP weapons that are a problem are the healing weapons and the, the main hand off hand caster combo. And yeah. uh, like I said, I, Wait, I, melee, I, melee DPS weapons are not a, are not a problem? They get they updated in 1.6. Yeah, which is the BW. So, we're not, we're not getting the 1.6 updated weapons. No, no, we are, but reasonably, they, they, you're probably not going to get them before BWL comes out anyway. But even what, what I'm they were, saying they were is, finalized. they were finalized in one six. Yeah. That's where they remained. Mm -hmm. But even if we're getting them during BWL, like they're going to be crazy for AQ40. Well, that that happened in that happened yeah. in Retail Vanilla too. Yeah. So, so they they had but in the... Retail Vanilla. Nobody, there weren't a lot of Spurgs. <laughs> well, <laughs> so so, and, and this is what I was going to say, like kind of like as a rebuttal of what you're saying does do the concerns that you have do they really come from uh the the decisions for classic or do they come from the fact that so many people know like how to approach the game now if they want to play it at the highest level right and they want to min yeah, max it's, it's that. yeah it's so that's that's the thing that you got to really look at i mean if, if if they rolled out the game the way that they've said it the same way you know and we didn't know anything at all about like brackets and this and that then i i, I mean maybe somebody would hit grand marshal by the time bwl came out but I mean, probably not, right? Reasonably, you know, surely somebody will, but there's there there's, there'd be more people that do it now than there would be have people not known about like how the brackets and stuff work, right? I mean, I would argue so, it's the blue set that's that's far more detrimental because the blue set can be, you know, you can yeah, you can earlier. get that, yeah, you can get that in a you few weeks. You can get that super fast, like two in months. A few weeks, and, and yeah. let's say let's say the uh, let, let's say phase two lasts three months, you could potentially have you know. You can get to rank eight in like like a month or something like that. You could have four pieces if you want to go to rank ten. It's like six weeks. In, within six weeks, you can have like basically gear better than anything in BWL, and BWL isn't even out yet, more or less, yeah. for some classes. Well, so that's pieces, that's the big problem. You'll, you'll have a two set, so it's you have seventeen pieces of gear, right? So you you have two pieces that that'll be good for a, for a while. 
I don't know. I, I don't really think that's the end of the world. That's essentially how it played out in Vanilla WoW. Um, I don't think it's that big of a deal. So as like, far as like as far as like there not being as many Spurgs back then as there are today, I mean, even if people back then didn't weren't intentionally ranking hard or didn't understand the bracket system, because the entire thing is percentage based, there were still people that were getting bracket one uh, that are getting bracket one and bracket two, right? So there were still people that were ranking. It was it was still happening. Somebody is still it's, going it's still, to get. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Someone's you're right. still getting it inadvertently, even if they're not intentionally. Well, well but here's the thing. But here's the thing. They're not. They're not always getting... going to get standing one. You see what I'm saying? Like they might not get it every single week because True. True. that that's the that's the biggest problem. The biggest problem uh, with the honor system in vanilla is probably that, like the fact that you have and, to uh, consist. You can't take a break because if you take a break, yeah. like yeah. you lose one week, yeah. but you lose two weeks or more even. Yeah. Depending on and also people, people definitely were not bracket stacking back then. <laughs> right, right. So, no. yeah, I mean, but I guess also, my biggest. Sorry, go ahead, Sonny. Sorry. But also with like the one point twelve system, like Tippets was saying, uh, or Tips I was saying that like the percentage was increased as well, right? So that that means yeah. more people can get the rank rewards per week. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the, yeah the bracket was like like thirty percent broader. <laughs> Sorry, tidbits. tidbits why you gotta do me like that dude <laughs> we just met man <laughs> <laughs> no nah, dude i forgive you dude you're horrid it's all good, hey, it good. yeah Let's yeah go. he's horrid it sounds about right yeah. i just i just think are you like, are you oh, all right all right dude okay is this just kidding is sony it. is sony our first horde guest no 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 nixium nixium was no. horrid Nix, a lot of Nixie was on the border though. He was, you know he was faction curious yeah yeah, um, yeah he was he was by fa factional yeah, I'm going exactly. Undead warrior, baby. Mm -hmm. Lane time. Undead warrior, damn, dude. Yeah. A believer, mm -hmm. dude. Yeah. It, uh, uh, something else here. I, I kind of want to keep talking about this, actually. Um, so we're talking about when the honor system comes in right now, just to catch every, I mean, anybody up who's new. Uh, we're talking about when the honor com system comes in with no battlegrounds and stuff. So the concern is people getting gear in this phase right here uh, that is on par with gear from this phase as far as the armor goes and on par with gear from this phase, phase three as far as weapons go. Blackwing layer, AQ-40 is, is kind of the armor. Um, now the difference, the difference is uh, you have PvP gear and, and item level is not really a metric that people really look at in Vanilla WoW, but it's still there. It's it's there to, to plug in as a variable into an equation for how many itemization points an item has. And then they take those itemization points and that that's how that's what your stats are and they distribute them properly for uh, whatever gear you have. PvP gear is itemized in a way to have a little bit more stamina, generally speaking, to have a little bit more stamina, a little bit more tanky, stats that are better for PvP. PvE gear is itemized better for more damage, right? Uh, so that's the big difference between AQ40 gear uh, and, and and PvP gear. But there are some pieces of PvP gear that end up being better than pieces of AQ40 gear. If that makes sense. So um, basically in between all this, Phase 4, you would have a Wrathy Basin come out. Uh, that would be with the ZG patch. And then AV and Warsong Gulch will come in with Blackwing Lair. So you're going to have a lot of content in, in each one of these phases that come in. Uh, and they're going to be spread out, hopefully, pretty well. Uh, we're all assuming that Phase 1 takes not too long, maybe maybe a, maybe a couple months, maybe a few months. Uh, same thing with Phase 2 and then going into Phase 3 with Blackwing Lair. Now, in Retail Vanilla, in Retail Vanilla, Blackwing Lair was put into the game about eight months in. So if we're talking about maybe Phase 2 being a few months, maybe two months, maybe three months max... Um, how long would you say phase one is for it to kind of match up with that timeline as, as closely as possible? Surely it's not going to be the exact same, but yeah. I don't know. Like uh, the way, the way it sounds like the way we're talking about it, then it's like, it sounds like six months max before Blackwing layer comes out. And I, I think it might be closer to like the seventh month mark, maybe even the eight month mark. Yeah. Like in my mind, phase one is five or six months. And, uh, and then phase two is two months long, which would put BW out seven or eight months. I, I think, think phase one's like, gonna but, last but, for five months. But five months well, would be longer than that's a long time. Yeah, Dude, phase one would be if phase one would be terrible with five months because you literally like there's Here, no content. The there's no here's PvP the deal, content, like, especially. Like yeah. personally, I'm going to be bored during phase one if it's five or six months. But okay. most people, they have no idea what's going on. It's going to be their first time. They're not going to be min maxing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're just like it's gonna it's gonna take them three or four months to hit level sixty. 
like so guys yeah. like us probably, probably people that are watching as well we're, we're them, like the, we're, we're like the one percent right like no one's gonna nerd out as hard as we are if you're right. watching right now you're a vanilla wow turbo spurg um, more than likely and i i don't think that they should cater the timeline to people like us in all honesty like they, they have to they have to appeal to that's the majority. fair that uh, that's fair. fair that's fair but why why would you make it longer out of curiosity what's what's the incentive to make it longer on blizzards so, i'm assuming to let people get to level 60 and actually get geared well it's yeah it's, it's the not leveling experience longer. the leveling experience is so hard for a complete newcomer are you kidding me like I, well, can you imagine a fresh yeah. level one warrior who's never played the game in his life try to get go from one to 60 all on his own yeah. yeah, yeah, I did He's it. He's probably gonna it's quit at level five, to be honest. The, the like, thing is, if, if phase <laughs> one is stupid thirteen year old, phase two is two months. That's pretty much how it happened in Vanilla WoW. Like, that's not <laughs> really a deviation. And BWO yes. is on month seven or eight. It's that's what? pretty much how it happened back in the day. Wasn't it three and a half months for phase one? I don't know. My, I, I can't remember the exact. Wasn't it three and a half months for Molten Core, and then D Dire Malt yeah. comes out after that? I was going to say, I don't see phase one being like, I, I think it's four months tops and it, it's not going to have to be exactly at like the four month. Okay. Exactly. You know, 122 days. Boom. It's, I, I think it's going to be like roughly, uh, I think it'll be less than four months, but I think four months tops, you know, at the, um, at the yeah. same time, it is an MMO and it's always been an MMO and there's always the catch up factor. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if new content comes out, these people can still level to 60. You know what I mean? So like you're saying like, why should they? Why should they cater around us tryhards? Mm -hmm. Are they really though? They're just releasing content along the way, and it's like these people will eventually do that content too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like well, they're gonna get this. I think the yeah, biggest I, I, thing. I guess like my main point is that like what I had said is pretty pretty in line with how it actually happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I think the biggest thing is that um, and this is with them going with the six phases of content release, and this is something that um. I, I think it's pretty well documented that a lot of people were really excited about the six phases versus four phases. I think the was that goal what it was originally. Yeah, it was originally four phases. They they announced that at BlizzCon and that was not good. That was terrible. Um, oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. So whenever they went to six phases, I, I think the idea behind their decisions are they want to make a game that's going to work for everybody. It's going to work for the casual players. It's going to work for the hardcore players. Um, now you can't make every decision can't be made to appeal to everybody but the product of all those decisions needs to be something that works for everybody if that makes sense so yeah. the concern so with that's, four a, that's a tall order dude <laughs> well well here's the thing here's the concern here's the concern with four phases um from before was that basically there's too much content in too few phases and because of that all like the super hardcore players were going to go through rush through and they were going to smoke all the more casual players and then they were probably going to get bored while the casual players are just going to get wrecked just stomped on and then they would yeah. be like well i don't even want to play this anymore because I'm, I'm so far behind right so it was too um it was too polarizing right with the six phases you can go in and you can break up the content a little bit more spread it out and you have more hype right because okay instead of having to wait let's say phase one six months phase two six months phase three now it's like okay three or four months in we can do phase two okay another another two or three months phase three so you have a more constant stream of content being released to you so the super hardcore players can't get too far ahead while the more casual players can you know take it in as as the game was kind of more more so how the game was meant to be taken in without getting just absolutely wrecked and it ends up being better for everybody. So uh, I think their general philosophy of how they want to approach the game is, is kind of that, like, is this going to be something that, that works for uh, the general audience is the, um, the, the, the sum of all the decisions going to be better for everybody. That's what I think. Yeah. Like f for me, my biggest concern with phase one and phase two is making sure that phase two is less than three months long, because I think that having people go into BWL, like if phase two is four months, and your raid roster, if you've been managing That's your brackets, rough. yeah. If if you have 15 people in your raid roster go into BWL day one with rank 14 gear with the weapons and stuff, like that really undermines the difficulty of BWL. Yeah. And just it just makes it like a lot less fun. It makes it way way more trivial. And so, like in my opinion, I think phase two perfect length two months at most. If you've been managing your brackets, you have a couple people that are rank 12. Um, I would like to see a two month phase two. I also think like maybe and i can understand this like one concern with the open world pvp phase phase two is that it would 
you know, like if there's just roaming death squads or flight path camping, it would turn people away from classic WoW. I think that's, I don't think it's going to be a huge deal, but if phase two goes on for too long, I could see that being a problem. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's say phase two went on for four months and like you're trying to level and you're a new player to the game and like between level 48 and 60, it takes you a month and a half just because a mix of you're new to the game, you're still leveling and everywhere you go, you're getting camped. Like that's probably pretty frustrating, right? So yeah. I think two months is like the best time frame for that. Yeah. The more I look at it, the more I kind of think that phase two actually probably shouldn't last that long at all. It's really not that much content. It's just some features being introduced and world bosses. So it's like, why drag that along? Yeah. yeah. From launch, yeah. From launch to to BGs, it should be like no more than six months. If I'm looking at the schedule here, uh, Dire Mall came out th less than or three months and a half after release. So Dire Mall three months after, um, with the world bosses. So phase one should really only be three and a half to four months. And then from there, another approximately three months till BGs. I mean, you could that, go, you could go three and a half, two and a half, and then you have seven months in. That's Blackwing Lair, which is like a month sooner. It's a month sooner than uh, Blackwing Lair was actually released in retail vanilla. But that's that's probably long, fine. How long would you guys want ideally Phase Three to last? Out of curiosity. Uh, phase Three. Because I'm looking at it. That looks like the golden. That looks like the golden phase to me. Yeah, well, honestly, honest. even even into, in it. even into phase mm -hmm. four, like I, I think really phase four is is probably that phase. So phase. Oh, you think phase four is the golden one? Yeah, well, because actually, ZG's... Yeah, phase three and phase four are yeah. So we're mm -hmm. gonna have a long time. Yeah, you have AB in the game, and then ZG helps the casters out a lot. Um, yeah. I think you could go into phase. You you can go into phase three. At, let's say like the seventh, six or seventh month mark. I I mm. I feel like set six is just a little bit fast. Um. Yeah. But if you go into phase three at the seven month mark and you're sitting in phase three for, let's say, hmm, let's look at this a little bit. So if you're sitting in phase three for another two to three months and then that now you're at the 10 month mark and then AB and ZG goes on for two more months, then AQ comes out about a year after, which I think... A year after, I think AQ came out at the 13 month mark in in retail vanilla. Uh, I th I think I think it was like 13 they, or 13 and a half months. Exactly the same. Like, are they have they kind of? Uh, have I think they every on? every like everything that they've said so far has basically been like they want to try and emulate vanilla as much as possible. Like they want to try and go back and and basically they want to do it the right way. So if you go and look at this and let's say at the one year mark you have AQ come out, so you have let's say six months to do the war effort that, you know, that could take however long it's dependent on server, do the war effort, open the gates, go do AQ. And then like six months later, you open up Nax and then Nax phase six lasts for six months. And then at the end of 24 months at two years, they go and they release a new set of fresh servers. That's, that's kind of the so, way that I see it playing out. So you're saying AQ 40 phase is going to last six months. Yeah. That's how it was. That's how, how yeah, so that's how it was. was. That shit, that's a long. Time. Yeah, but the thing is, that phase is so it, it's so long for a few reasons, right? One is the fact that you have to open the gates. There's a lot of content, and like if you yeah. start, not everybody is gonna be on the cutting edge. You know what I mean? Oh, of course. Of so course. Yeah. they they have to naturally like stretch it out more and more as the as the stuff goes on later on. You can go like boom, 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 stretch it out a little bit, but there's gonna be a lot going on within that time because people are gonna want to catch up and and do all that. Um, and also with ZG and stuff like that coming out in the phase before, I think, I think that's likely what's going to end up happening. Because it's, it, let's say it's a six month phase, right, or even a five month phase, it's not really that. It's really going to be like almost like a month less, maybe, because I could see this happening on a lot of servers. Okay, we can go in and we can open the gates like that. We can do that if we wanted to, but no, we're going to hold on and we're going to try and get three or four scarab lords. You know what I mean? For yeah. guild. Yeah. So Until someone snipes it, dude. <laughs> well, and somebody could go and snipe it too. But then at that at that point, like you gotta be ready on the ball. But like I, I know what's happened before on private servers is like you get the top guilds together and they're like, No, they plant the flag and say, We're running this and nobody else can really do anything about it. So everybody just kinda waits for them to open it up. Have you guys like this is kinda random, but you guys ever thought about like how we're we're gonna be playing World of Warcraft for like another two years? Yeah, at least. Then yeah. maybe Burning Crusade, and then maybe Wrath. Yeah, then Burning. Yeah, 
Go and then right. we'll graduate high school again. It'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be outstanding. It'll be good stuff. This is going to sound weird, but like, I really want to be addicted to WoW again. Oh, and same. That's not I'll, weird. I'll log into retail WoW and I'll, I'll have a thought like, I really want to enjoy this. I'm going to try to do something. And I just, I can't feel that way, man. Like classic WoW is going to be great, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Um, <clears throat> Real quick, guys, uh, just a quick little shout out. If you guys haven't, please, please, please go ahead and do this. If you have not followed Stay Safe TV, if you have not followed Tips Out Baby, if you haven't followed Sony, all their handles are on the screen right now. Mods, if you could, if you could put their their links in the chat, please to to help us out. Please go follow them. Go sub to their YouTube channels um, regularly. It's it's myself and Tips on the show, and then we we have a guest on. Sony's our guest today, uh, and and obviously you guys can see that we're mostly talking about PvP. Um, <clears throat> and also we're going to be doing a, uh, we're going to be doing Q and a at the end. So you can ask any questions to us, uh, here on the show today. And, and we usually start with Twitter. So make sure to follow us on Twitter, tweet at us, hashtag classic cast. That's usually how I look at everything. And, uh, and we can go from there. So, um, again, kind of continuing on with the PVP discussion, um, uh, something that has kind of come up lately. And I think that this is something that's very important is the concept of like tournament realms or um, dueling servers, stuff like that, um, for for the actual release of Classic WoW, a place where people can go on there. You can get like an instant level sixty, and you can test stuff out, and you can uh, you can duel with other players. This is something that happens in like the private server scene, um, but also for the sake of like content creation, YouTube and stuff like that. Like people will go on there and they'll make videos of like, oh, like look at me using this certain item because it's something that they didn't actually go and attain. Um, but for, you know, the average player and, and, you know, what people would want to do, like if we want to host like a dueling tournament or something like that, maybe it's not something that's always open to the public, but this is something that Blizzard could come in and, and host like actual events. And I mean, everybody's always esports this, esports that. Look, vanilla is not like a real esport, but one thing that's for sure is that it's damn entertaining. And I think that uh, we've seen this in the private server scene where people will do like pre-made versus pre-made battlegrounds and uh, people will host dueling tournaments and stuff like that. And it's uh, it's something that's fun and something that people want to watch. So having some sort of support in place where like Blizzard could activate this if they want is uh, is something that I, I know I'm certainly a big fan of. And, and when when would you want that hypothetically? Well, it would just be like just in classic. Right. So, <laughs> well, wait, like, just in classic. I, I mean, just just have just like. Well, what I'm I talking think about. The perfect way to do it is to have these like tournament realms or like PTRs, whatever you want to call them, at the end of each raid tier, and they're up for maybe two or three weeks, and it's something that yeah, Blizzard can advertise and get hype that's around, cool. and you introduce it at the end of a raid tier when things are kind of like fizzled out anyway, and it's a low key time period, and like. I think that if you have them up permanently, it's way less hype. It becomes right. kind of stale and stagnant. But if you have like four four tournament realms and it comes up at the end of each raid tier and they're up for two or three weeks, like that's a big hype event. People come yeah. forward to it. They can raise they can raise prize pools and they can organize events and that'd be badass. And like you said, Vanilla WoW is not an esport. I don't think that's what this is about. Vanilla right, WoW is exactly. about community and player interaction. And what better way to do that than to have a big duel tournament where you have hundreds of people standing yep. in the crowd cheering each other on and have big crazy pop and streams i mean there's mm -hmm. obviously a desire for it because both tips and i um hosted dual tournaments i mean thousands mm -hmm. of viewers it was crazy people loved it it was, it was awesome a lot of fun there there was a private server event uh it was a dual tournament also i think and uh that did very very well like there's right. obviously a desire well and dude so this is something really that cool, people do like like it was it, it's actually it 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 it, 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 it <laughs> give me a second <laughs> stuttering like crazy um I find it shocking that you actually want something like that, Esfan. Um, so, well, just, just because you guys talk so much about like you know character development, character progression, like the thing with these arena tournament realms because they had them in Wrath. I played them. Yeah, like crazy, they had them in Burning Crusade but, too. Yeah, in yeah. Burning Crusade too. Yeah, yeah for tournaments, mm -hmm. um, it it takes away entirely from the progression. But back then, obviously, it's more fun to like mess around on another class. You well, have gear, you can test out everything. That's not necessarily what it's Classic. about, right? It's not about it's not about playing the game like playing classic wow like in, in that sense no, of like, course not yeah so like this is something that i, I know like I, I know people do this like in the in the pvp scene on private servers like somebody will host their own like a locally hosted private server and they will go pre-made versus pre-made and they will do like all day 
you have like two of the top pre-mades just go through and they would just just play against each other just for fun and uh, well until somebody gets upset and spurgs out and then ddos is the server and and then you can't play anymore so <laughs> so th this is something that happens in the private server scene where like people will go in and they they will they will play and they will practice against each other they'll just do it for fun and just for bragging rights and they go spurg out on on discord or whatever about it and i think that's fine but like my point is that this is going to happen whether whether blizzard wants to or not people are going to make these private servers and they're going to go do this uh, and like even for me i've you said this so? yeah yeah because it's it, it happens like there's i mean like i would say one of the more active private servers right now is is like that for people who aren't interested in in like playing through classic right now but they want to like kind of dick around or whatever and uh and just just practice dueling and stuff like i you know that's that's how i feel about it um so it's it's just one of those things that I think if people are going to do this anyway, then adding some sort of support for it, not where it's open all the time, kind of like Staysafe said, uh, but having some sort of support for it or um, if there's any sort of like cool events or whatever, like you said, at the end of like a raid tier or whatever, like every few months you open it up for a few weeks. I think that's something that could yeah. be cool. No, I think I actually do agree. Like, I think at the end of a raid tier, once all the contents fizzled out, like mm -hmm. that's kind of what they did with tournament realms, too. Yeah. Like they only they only really introduced tournament realms at the end of content, and like one time they introduced it for ESL, I think, but you only had access to it if you got invited to ESL. Mm. Um, in paid. so I think that's I think that's a fine idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it it's funny, like uh, you know, Stacey mentioned the dueling tournaments that we hosted. Before that, I, I this had never crossed my mind. Like I remember I participated in dueling tournaments back in vanilla. We would host them like level 30 and stuff like that in guru bashi yeah, arena just, yeah. but but i never knew it was like such a spectacle and how much people wanted to watch it until you know i hosted mine stay safe hosted his and they're both really successful and then recently we had that other big tournament and it was really successful all things considered and it's like wait a minute this this is actually a thing and again you know that there's a certain realm right now that people have been playing on and it's really popular and maybe this is just a thing that you like you know stay safe said at the very end of content, the last, it, you know, just the last couple of weeks, maybe two weeks, Blizzard allows the community to host, you know, little mini tournaments on these realms with the gear that's available on live. And yeah, just, just for fun, just a community event. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Like it, it's, it's such a gimme for Blizzard. It's such an easy win. It's such a fan service move. Like I don't really see mm -hmm. a good argument not to do it other than if you're just like super spurred turbo, no changes because it, it didn't happen this way in vanilla. Wow. It can't have like, well, it doesn't even affect on, your like, game. That's the thing. It doesn't even affect the servers. Tertiary. Yeah. It, it's yeah. a completely separated thing. Like it's, mm -hmm. it would just be a ton of fun. Yeah. I think for Blizzard, the, the, it would be depending on you know how much it costs to run these servers and you know what how does blizzard benefit i, I that's what they would be looking at i would assume i hate how that's even a thing you know what i mean like yeah mm -hmm. listen i'm 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 really stoked classics coming out big props to blizzard for that but let's not beat around the bush they shit they shit the bed with a lot of other things leading <laughs> up to this point. So, uh, great well, that they're like finally tossing us a bone you know it's cool yeah yeah. If you uh, if you want to look at it from like what does Blizzard get out of it? I mean, tips out dual tournament had like 10k viewers and mine had like 7k or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's huge. It's it's an enormous amount of eyeballs on this game, mm -hmm. and yeah, people will see this these crazy play moves, these crazy dual gameplay and stuff like this, and be like, wow, I want to yeah. play that game. Okay, I'm gonna log into Classical. I'm gonna level up. Like, it's it's just free advertisement. I think. Yeah. Well, and just to put yeah, it into perspective, yeah. like. The world first race is going on and there's world first race streams that don't have that many views, you know, like the like that's yeah. that's on the level of some of the biggest world first race streams, you know, well, it's the it's the yeah. one so. competitive aspect of vanilla dueling, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. battlegrounds and, and even then go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was just gonna say pre made battlegrounds like they get pretty stale. If you get two top tier teams going at it, like it's kind of a little bit. Well, I, I think I think it's easier think to follow. Is, I think I think oh, battlegrounds, in, battlegrounds are? in in vanilla it's easier to follow than in uh, than in retail. Like in retail, like there's there's kind of like stupid stuff to it, and like there's like the timer on Warsong Gulch, which, in a sense, that's like okay, well you need to have a time limit for you know they might see it as like you need to have a time limit for an event or whatever, but I, I think that totally changes the meta of Warsong Gulch and retail WoW versus vanilla WoW. So, I I, I don't yeah. know. I think I think it could be cool to watch. Like you have like spectator cam, you're flying around. It's like oh look at how look at how this team is moving. Like this group is moving here in a Rathy Basin. Like they're they're you know, Russian blacksmith. I, I don't know. I think it could be pretty cool to watch, actually. 
Um, I just I just know War Song with like two fully stacked best in slot pre mades with best compositions, two druids, guard. Like it's just for me, it's not in, it's interesting to watch. I've never been a fan of battlegrounds though, like rated battlegrounds mm, in any yeah. in any competitive because the killing is just too slow. You know, like it, it, you get fully. You get best in slot healers healing a flag carrier. There's no increased damage to flag carriers back then, right? I'm pretty sure right, there is. There's not. No. There's not. Yeah. So but it I, can I get know. very dull, in my opinion. But that's just me. Everyone has different interests. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Different part part of me with the tournament realm stuff, like I could see from Blizzard's point of view how they're like, okay, this tournament realm issue. It's like it's a situation where you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to ask for a glass of milk, right? You give a you give a vanilla player a classic server, he's going to ask for a tournament realm kind of deal, like. I, I, I would understand that kind of argument, but at the same time, like, it's such a free W, man. Like, it would be so fun. Like, it, it's such an easy win for them. Mm -hmm. You know what would know. be amazing? You know how many you know things have been easy wins for Blizzard that they haven't done? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, eSport tabards, for one. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, they don't have those? That's actually no, interesting. Dude, dude, can you imagine crowdfunding one of their tournaments if they just fucking let people buy method tabards and then get more tier one organizations involved like dude i talked about all this back when i was even given a shit about wow esports but now it's like just terrible so i don't care anymore mm -hmm. i actually didn't know that but but yeah like um if blizzard it would be amazing if, if blizzard allowed us you know just for research and development purposes to host a tournament before a classic you know j just just to see you know just to gauge how much demand there would be for this type of thing um if anyone from Blizzard is watching, uh, that that would be that would be great. And uh, if it gets a lot of views and a lot of engagement, then maybe we could have tournament realms, uh, possibly. Yeah, just wanted to say that. Well, yeah. let me put it this way: our 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 tournaments had thousands of people on the demo. This is a two week long impromptu, quickly planned level nineteen cap demo with tons of bugs, auto attack bugs, and regen rate bug. It was it was the most scuffed environment you could possibly have a tournament. Dude, it was so still, bad. Still, still, yeah. thousands of viewers, man. Like, there's the desire yeah. there. And who doesn't want to see and it was hard to, counter behind, warlocks again? That's dude. true. Yes, true. And the other thing is, it was behind a fifty dollar paywall to even play on it, and still, sure. still, it was crazy popping. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think I, I think it'll be really cool to 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 see some stuff like that. You know, even if it's even if it's not on a tournament realm, I think people are going to host dueling tournaments on their servers, their own servers and whatnot. And I think, I think all that is going to be really, really, really cool. So, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I go ahead. I, I want to go ahead pretty soon. And and we we started a little bit late today. We we had some issues and stuff and getting started. Um, but uh, we do want to go into Q and A here pretty soon. So guys, if you have any questions, please go ahead and tweet at us uh, with hashtag Classcast. I'm going to be checking Twitter and. Uh, and, and, and picking out some good questions for uh, for us to talk about. If you have any questions for uh, any of us on here, Sony, Tips Out, Baby, or Stay Safe TV, uh, we're going to start taking a look at some of that stuff. Um, this is actually a good one. This is a good one to start. Blizzard stopped publicly releasing subscriber metrics by WAD. Do you guys think that they will release sub numbers for Classic? Um, and this is from Brandon. So... I think that's I think that's a fair question, right? But something that you got to consider is like if they've already stopped releasing subscriber numbers, then they probably won't go back on it and be like, "Oh, hey, look how many subs we have now." Uh now the the saving grace for that sort of line of thought is that classic and retail subs are going to be linked. It's just going to be one sub for both games. So yeah. they're surely going to have a huge boost in sub numbers. So they might like try and flex and be like, "Hey, we have you know 10 million people playing again or whatever," and that's fine. Uh, but I think it's going to be weird if they like all of a sudden they want to talk about it when it's good and then not talk about it when it's bad because what ends up happening is people are just going to assume if they're not talking about it, then let's say let's say they talk about it at 10 million or 8 million or 6 million, right? Whatever number it is, and then all of a sudden they say they're not going to talk about sub numbers anymore, then they're going to assume that the sub number that they say is always lower than whenever they came back and announced the sub number again. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, so my understanding of why they stopped talking about sub numbers was because they switched to more like microtransactions and they, they added the in-game shop. And so rather than sub numbers, now we have like the quarterly revenue reports. I don't think I don't think we'll have sub numbers for classic WoW or retail WoW ever again. 
what I do think, like, I don't know if you guys remember the, what was it, the quarter four earnings report that we all talked about and watched? They they showed WoW's revenue, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I think that classic WoW's revenue will just be rolled into that. So the WoW revenue ch- column there on the on the graph that we saw a couple months ago, it, mm-hmm. that will be an addition of classic WoW. It's a shared sub and retail WoW in mm-hmm. addition to retail WoW's microtransactions. I think it'll all be the same thing. So I, I don't really think we'll have a metric to see like how successful classic WoW is. I think hypothetically, if we did, if they had separate subscriptions, I, I especially don't think Blizzard would release sub numbers then because it would just blunder. It, w- it would show how bad retail would probably be doing. Because imagine if oh, they yeah. released numbers and classic was higher than retail. Like, yeah, that would look and, so uh, bad for the company. So I, I think it will be. I think it will be. And you're right. They're not going to come out and say, all right, guys, retail wow is 3 million subs and classic wow has uh, 6 million active players or subs, right? They're never going to say that. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think uh, I think what would be one of the best things that could come out of Classic is if Classic is a success, which we're all hoping that it is, if Classic is a, is a success and people come in and they say, hey, okay, why are people liking Classic so much? Let's break this down. And what elements of Classic can we take and put into the retail game and what are people really not enjoying about retail and you can kind of fix the retail game up a little bit i've said this from the beginning you have two different games for two different markets of people it's like a venn diagram and right in the middle there's going to be some people who like classic and people who like retail there's people who like both um i do think that you 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 probably should have two games for two different markets but if this if a certain circle in the venn diagram starts to get smaller and smaller then you got to find a way to make that circle bigger, right? Even if that circle starts to go into this circle. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. Then maybe I didn't visualize that the, the best way, but... No, it's perfect. I saw it. Didn't Eon say... Is that how you say his name? Ion? Eon? Uh, Ian, Ian, yeah. Didn't Ian say something about uh, wanting to make retail, like take hints of classic design and put that into retail? Did he mention something about that? I think that was like something he said... Uh when they when they were talking about bfa development right a little bit and uh like they definitely brought a couple things back with uh like more world and world engagement and they brought back a couple class buffs but uh, i think a lot of it was sort of a miss well there was a recent clip with with ian and lore uh, the other day um mm-hmm. when they were talking about a potential level squish and how the conversation's been brought up several times mm-hmm. and uh the idea behind it would essentially to be add more to add more i guess um exciting things that you get each level so instead of having right. to wait you know 15 yeah. is it 15 levels for a talent point now maybe you'd only wait like three levels or maybe just one level just like mm-hmm. we had back in vanilla stuff like that so um i mean i personally believe 100 percent if classic is successful not just by our standards but more importantly by whatever standard or metric blizzard is going to be examining i can definitely see the possibility of some features being you know re re re-implemented i guess uh you know, into, into the live game. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, um, you know, it's good to have two games that are a little bit different too, they, that appeal to different audiences. So we'll see how Blizzard yeah. manages to do that. I, I'm more in line with that. Like I think Classic WoW and Retail WoW are intentionally appealing to very different demographics. I think that they have their Retail WoW demographic on lock. And I think that uh, like Classic WoW is an attempt to appeal to this more like old school RPG MMO style of gamer. I, I would honestly be very surprised if they start taking like successful aspects of classic WoW and putting them into retail WoW because I'm not I'm not sure and I don't know if they know how positively the retail WoW player base would uh, respond to those gameplay aspects like they mm-hmm. those those mm-hmm. the people that are enjoying retail retail WoW right now they just might not want that stuff you know and when do you think the demographic is. shifted I think it's been a slow shift really yeah. like because everything what's... after Cataclysm I think. Well, I think what's happened is that, yeah, maybe even Wrath, yeah, like, I think what kind of happened over the years is that, like, people kind of fell out of the game and new people started playing who maybe, like, didn't know what the game was like before, what's the hype about, and they happened to enjoy the game as it was. So you've kind of got this, like, churning of the bucket going on, and, you know, there there might be people who are intrigued by Classic or excited about Classic who haven't even played it, sorry, excited about Classic who haven't even played it, but um, I think the, the bucket's been churned quite a bit to the point where... You just have a lot of players who they they don't really like the type of gameplay that classic has to offer and, and that's fine right there's just different different games for different people that's fine yeah. um but that doesn't necessarily mean that everything in classic uh putting everything in classic 
in retail would be bad or everything in classic and retail would be good. Uh, I, I think that's yeah. one of those things like, dude, I hear this argument all the time. Well, it was that way in vanilla. It's like, okay, guys, just because something was that way in vanilla doesn't necessarily mean it's good for classic, you know? And like, obviously, you know me, like I'm, I'm big on vanilla. I'm big on classic, all this stuff. But like just using that as a blanket statement for it, it was that way before doesn't always make it good for the current version of the game. Um, I don't know. It's just you, you got to there, there's so many different factors in there. It's a lot harder than that. So just having it like vanilla is vanilla yeah. and, and, and retail is retail. Like, I think that's fine. So, yeah, no like, changes. I never, exactly. I, 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 I really exactly. never dissected it about like when it kind of shifted because to me, I just figured that the game was going to shit. And they didn't, you know, I didn't think about it. Maybe they were just trying to yeah. appeal to a different demographic entirely because yeah. it's still an MMO. You know, that's that's what confused right. me. It's still an MMORPG. Like, how are you going to cater an MMORPG to a different demographic? You mm -hmm. know? So, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. And I, I know, I like, mean, I think I think people are misunderstanding. We're talking about retail a little bit at this point. Like this, this kind of like yeah. spun off into something else. So I'm not necessarily yeah. talking about like uh, I'm not talking about this way for like it used to be that way in vanilla and we're talking about classic. I'm talking about taking everything from vanilla and putting it into retail. Wow. And, and saying that it would be better for retail. Wow. Like certain things are better for the game uh, based on everything else that's involved in the game. It's one piece in a puzzle as opposed to. Uh, just looking at every piece of that puzzle individually. That's kind of, that's, that's the point I was trying yeah. to get across. I, I think that's a really good point. Like, so two two things that I really dislike about Retail WoW, I mean, we, we can talk about like LFR and Flying Mounts. I think those are really bad additions to the game. And I think that that like changed the way players interact with the game a lot. But I think if they took those things out of the game today, that would up, like, I'm not really invested in Retail WoW right now. I'm not playing it. I haven't logged in in a couple months. If they took those things out, Sure, they would be appealing to me, but they're not appealing to the current retail WoW demographic. I think that would upset a lot of current retail WoW players. So there's really like there's no reason for them to do that, right? Mm -hmm. They need to keep the people that are playing happy. Right. Now there's certain well, things like let's... sorry, go ahead. Were flying mounts dumb in TBC? Because I really do not remember flying mounts being. I love flying mounts in TBC. In TBC, a lot of people love flying mounts, and I was one of them. Yeah. But it's one of those things. Hindsight is twenty twenty, and then you look back on it, and you're like, well, there were some cool world PvP things that happened in Burning Crusade. Like they had the like the Hala battles. I always thought were fun in the Grand. Yeah. Uh, but or Elemental Plateau. Yeah, Elemental Plateau. All that stuff was was really really cool. And, uh, like, you know, flying mounts were a big part, and flying in general was a big part of that, because in Hala, you flew around, you dropped the bombs and all this stuff. But um, I think that there was world PvP in Burning Crusade, but the fact that now, instead of playing on this plane, you were now playing in this area, it, it, it totally changed everything for world PvP. And, yeah. and that's that's what a lot of people didn't that's like about true. flying mounts in Burning Crusade. So, well, yeah, hindsight like it, is twenty twenty. Flying mounts really changed the way in which players interact with the world, you know? I, I don't hmm. think that, like getting places should really be that convenient i think that flight paths like go flight paths like are like a perfect bridge between convenience and having to interact with the world around you so in vanilla wow if you're running from the top of a zone to the bottom of the zone you have to dodge monsters or dodge the players and you're forced to interact you like you might see your friends out there and that feels cool like you might see a horde players if i'm playing alliance i have to either fight them or run around them there's monsters or elite monsters i have to dodge like the world feels more alive when i can't just fly up five thousand feet yeah and just fly <laughs> Yeah, yeah just well, everything. it's also another thing lore pointed out that like most people had 60 percent <coughs> flying back then you know like That's now true. everyone just has like insta 310 you could only get 310 back in tbc maybe even wrath i can't remember if you got gladiator right yeah. uh you i think get, so that uh, i think it was the gladiator mount was uh yeah because that's uh, how i got three, that's how i got 310 it was, uh, it was gladiator mounts and ashes of alar yeah yeah that's right ashes yeah. of alar yeah. Um, so with I mean, people flying on 60%, I think that I actually 60% looking back at it was like an interesting spin on it because like, yeah, you could travel, you know, every Axie, but it was slower. You know what I mean? So maybe that was yeah. okay. Yeah. I remember if you had an yeah. Epic Mount, if you had an Epic Flying Mount and Burning Crusade, you were like a straight running badass. Like I was just yeah. like, yeah. that was crazy. Like I, like there, I, I don't remember a lot of people unless they were gladiator. I, I, I remember seeing, I mean, obviously it's not like there were that many gladiators, but like most of the people I knew that got Gladiator, like there was no way they were gonna be able to afford an Epic Flying Mount because yeah, the same I could people, never afford it. dude, PVPers like just were like always just like scratching the bottom of the barrel for like repair costs. <laughs> like yeah. that's what I remember. Like that's how I was. So, true. so yeah, I had sixty percent until I got Gladiator in season two. Yeah, <laughs> in yeah. season two I had like sixty percent. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, I think that the concept of trying to retrofit retail WoW with elements of classic, I think it sounds a lot better in, in kind of theory than it would be in reality, um, barring like a few exceptions that might be really good for the game. I think what, you know, the ideal situation, kind of the pie in the sky situation would be if classic is so successful and it shows and it proves demand for a more old school style MMO that Blizzard would in turn at some point in the future, whether it be a few years after, uh, maybe even after they launch TBC, et cetera, um, maybe they, you know, they, they take another crack at, at the old school MMO genre entirely and we get a new uh, game. I don't That's know. Actually a, I, I, think, I think we might see a whole new arc of gaming in general because like, what did we see with BRs when they started catching traction, right? Like what if Classic WoW is a huge hit on Twitch and on mainstream social media because of how big Twitch is right now? What if we just see a bunch of, you know, AAA companies and like actually good companies like try to take a crack at MMOs? I, like I, that would be dope. I think hypothetically, this is the, and this was my thought is I, I've said this since the classic announcement is that we might be like on on a, on the cusp of like a renaissance in gaming where oh, and you're already revolution. you're you're starting to see like a bunch of companies are like oh they're they're re-releasing a bunch of old games either remaster or just re-release for you know new platform consoles all this stuff and i i think that's cool and i think somebody at some point is going to say why the hell do these guys like these old games more than the new games and it's not just nostalgia right i i i, I, I very very idea. much it's so annoying because it's like dude i played <laughs> i'm glad you're not the only one dude. well dude okay oh so this is how God. this is exactly how i feel i came back and whenever i started the, the whole reason I got back into vanilla was I, I was working. I was in the real world. I was doing football. I was going to be a football coach. Um, I was kind of like, I, I was looking for another job and I was injured. So like I had just had surgery and all this stuff and I was kind of like recovering. And while I was recovering, I was like, Hey, you know, I had just heard about the nostalgia shut down all this stuff. And I heard about this new private server opening up and I was like, okay, like frick, I'll play it for like a month or whatever while I recover. And then, and then we'll move on. So I make this character. I make a rep paladin. I've played a rep paladin since, you know, the very beginning. I started playing a week after launch, and I've always played a rep paladin. So I make a rep paladin, and, you know, I give him a goofy mustache. I normally have a goatee. My character normally has a goatee, and I gave him a mustache because I'm like, who cares? I'm just going to make him look stupid because I'll, uh, I'll, I'll quit after like a month or so. Maybe I'll get to 60 and quit. So um, I start playing, and I start having these these experiences, and I start, like, I, I start making friends with people, and I start doing things, and I'm like, dude why is this game better than I remember it being? I thought that I was going to play this for like a month or so. And I, I, I swear to God, I, I, I genuinely feel this way. I had more fun playing on like on, on private server vanilla. Wow. Like playing vanilla again in 2018, 2017, uh, than I had playing vanilla back in the day. Like, that's just how I remember it. Like, I'm like, I had fun back yeah. in the day. But I had more fun playing it more recently well, just because I'm older, I'm smarter, I, I can I can make better decisions, I have more time to play, there's more things that I can do. I think that the design of the game is genuinely good. So Yeah, 100% on top of that, and of course this is my anecdote, but having spent a lot of time on uh, private Vanilla WoW uh, fan forums, most people that are playing those fan forums, uh, they uh, they never played Vanilla WoW in the first place. Like yeah. they heard about it or they're retail mm -hmm. WoW players and they were interested about like the origins of WoW. You know, they, they heard an art article about Nostaris or whatever. And so they go back and they try it out and uh, they fall in love with it. And it's their first time playing. They never played Vanilla. So it can't yeah. be nostalgia for these people. Right. I'm going to be honest. Like I haven't been having any fun playing any video games lately, but the most fun I've been having recently is on these Vanilla WoW fan forums. Like, yeah, that's well, a great for just reading but, about it. Yeah, yeah, just reading, reading, yeah. It. it's, well, it's articles. Just incredible. Yeah, this is articles. this is exactly how I feel right now, especially with being as close as we are to a classic, like, like it's real. Like, I and I and I've felt this way since I got banned, right? Because I got I, I got banned, the classic launch came out. Oh, here's the thing I'll give you the timeline, quick rundown. Classic, classic was announced. I was like, well, crap. Okay, well, I'm going to finish out my time here. I don't know if I want to re-roll on a fresh or anything like that, but I'll, I'll finish out my time here. I'll go through, I'll clear Nax, I'll stream it, whatever, all this stuff. Get banned. So whenever I get banned, uh, it, it just kind of like, I, I'm really thinking about this stuff, and I'm like, you know, I, I still wanted to play because I wanted to finish the job, right? I wanted to go through, I wanted to clear Nax, doing my ret thing, whatever, just being a meme. And I, and I did that, and then, like, a new fresh server comes out, and I'm like, dude, with Classic coming out on the horizon, like, I just don't want to do it again. I, and there's other stuff that I want to do, and, and I, I, I especially feel that way now more than ever, because, like, we know it's right around the corner. Like, it's it's happening this summer. So, yeah. 
for me, I've it was like just been writing. I've just been writing these huge essays on how to level. <laughs> right, right, exactly. One to Thirty and <laughs> so, posting them on the fan forums. So, That's so I, yeah. So for me, like it's it's just been one of those things where it's like I. And I know a lot of people, a lot of streamers feel this way. It's like people will turn on their streams and they like they don't have like a game that they want to that they want to play. They don't have a game to grind. And there's a lot of you know people who are not streamers who feel this way. They 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 basically don't have the game that they want to play. But then at the same time, like they might not want to go play on a prize because it's like, dude, I, like what am I gonna do? I'm gonna level all the way to sixty, and then as soon as I hit sixty, re-roll again. Like, come on. So uh, I think uh, I think that's how a lot of people feel right now. And it's just just hold on. It's so close. We like we just gotta hold on. Hopefully we'll get yeah. a beta in, in the next, I don't know, like maybe a month or so. I, I think and 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 we're we're running kind of low on time. This might be a topic for the next classic cast, but uh just talking about like beta predictions and stuff like that. I, and, and we've all talked about it on our streams. Again, please, yeah. please, please, please go follow Stay Safe TV, go follow Tips Out Baby, go follow Sony. Uh Sony's our guest today. Normally it's myself and, and stay safe and, and tips who are here. Um, and then, and then we, we, we have a guest come join us. So if you haven't done that, please go follow them as well as this channel. But yeah, like we, we, we always talk about this stuff. Uh, we're constantly talking about vanilla. Wow. Whether we're playing, whether we're playing vanilla. Wow. Or sorry, not vanilla. Wow. Whether we're playing retail. Wow. Or, uh, playing another game or doing whatever. I think that's a core component of all of our channels. Like we're always down to talk vanilla, almost always down to talk vanilla. Um, yeah. so Yeah. I, I think that's uh, literally all I talk about. All I all I do yeah. on my streams recently is just bitch about how bad games are now, and then just talk about how much I want to play classic and like just theorize all this stuff and talk about the guild and plans and everything. It's just I mm -hmm. I don't care about any games. Like I played Fortnite for a while, but it's just that's not even an MMO. I'm just an MMO gamer, so that's not gonna <laughs> yeah. cure my itch at all. Yeah, so it's just it's a I'll hard time, it, man, dude. for gamers. It's a hard time. Yeah. Let's get to another question here. This is from Yain, who uh, I unbanned from my chat today. So, so uh, Yain, uh, Yain asks, uh, you know, big streamers are going to come back and, and they're going to stream Classic WoW. Shroud, so on. Tim the Time, we, we all know a lot of guys are going to be coming back and, and streaming Classic. He says, uh, these guys will introduce a huge amount of new players to Blizzard games, so whenever the new retail gets launched, Classic will probably help the new expansion pack get close to the record high sub number. Thoughts? Um maybe honestly it, it could be that's a good way of looking at it uh as far as viewership on twitch goes that's going to be something interesting to look at because if you look at runescape and old school runescape they're in two different sections are they going to do the same thing for wow and wow classic i'd imagine so maybe yeah so uh, i don't know it'll it'll be interesting either way you know in regards to what you're saying whether people are watching in the wow section or in the classic wow section it's the same sub it's a shared sub so yeah probably i mean or not probably, but potentially, like, I mean, if, if Blizzard gets back to that 12 and a half million, I think if Blizzard gets back to that 12 and a half million number, they are going to get worked. Like, I don't think any, like, realistically, I don't think they're expecting to get back to that number to have that many people play Classic because if, if they have the original amount of servers open up that they had in Retail Vanilla, that is that is not going to be enough for having a, as many subs available. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and based on based on the information we've received so far, it seems like they're going to have less servers than they had. They could, on yeah. Original launch, I think original launch had something like ninety four U.S. servers, yeah. and based on a relatively recent tweet from Ian, we could potentially get like twenty thirty servers for classic. So, yeah, I think I so too. Uh, enough. Yeah, gonna, it's gonna be it's gonna be insane, dude. I yeah. hope we get to log in day one. That's my I hope. <laughs> yeah, we get to log in. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's gonna be good. Um, yeah, they're probably gonna have to get some more hamsters. That's for sure. Lot, lot as, of as as far as like the big streamer thing, it depends on what they're saying on stream. If they're if they're week one playing Classic and they're like, "Wow, Classic is great," um, Retail Wow is terrible in comparison, right? People, their viewers are not going to be as eager to go over and play Retail Wow, right? It depends on what they say, I think, and how they kind of spin it. It'll be, yeah, it'll be really interesting. Um, hmm. I'm trying to understand this question. Uh, do you think they'll tune raids slash open world content properly for the 1.12 items that'll be in the game from the beginning of Classic? Uh, I think they're going to try and keep it as close to vanilla as possible. Like, uh, surely, you know, there, there's going to be a little bit of a difference with having like 1.12 versions of items in from the beginning. 
but you're not going to have all the 1.12 items in the game from the beginning, right? So there's a few select items that are going to make a difference uh, as far as like molten core progression and this and that. And people joke about like the difficulty of Vanilla WoW, like quote difficulty of Vanilla WoW. The difficulty of Vanilla WoW, so much of it comes from the preparation of the game, right? Like yeah. preparation, knowledge, and being able to manage a raid roster. Because you might know something and it, oh, okay, like... I can run out against, uh, we're fighting Baron Geddon, and I know that I have to run out so I don't get smoked, but there's 39 other people in that raid, <laughs> and, and I guarantee you, you will almost always see, and not, not almost idiot. always see, but but in, in, the, in your raiding, in your raiding career, I guarantee you will see people die to Baron Geddon. I have died to Baron Geddon, because I've been, like, getting greedy, and I'm trying, like, I try and stay in there for as many ticks as I can, you know? So it's just like, it, it just happens, you know what I mean? I or or I living bomb, about, dude. Ooh. Some oh, Okay. Uh, oh, you got the bomb. bomb. Run out. What? What? Dude, run out. Run to the corner. And they don't run out. And then boom, you, everybody's dead. Couldn't you hearth with that? Like, and get into Ironforge Bank and then just, like, blow everybody up? Dude, you it, could do that. Dude, another awesome thing is if you were a hunter or warlock and your pet got living bomb, you dude, would immediately oh, yeah. dismiss your pet and so then resummon funny. the pet and it retained yeah, the debuff. Yeah. There's so a really funny, funny old dude. video where two warlocks do that in the Ironforge Bank and they oh, just I, blow I everyone that. up. Dude, yeah, I had think a time. They allow stuff like that. Will they allow stuff like that in the infernal thing? Do you think oh, like be releasing demons? Do you think they'll allow that, or would that be considered better. griefing? I think I think at a certain point it becomes griefing, but I think if you just do it, it's like whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I think at a certain point it becomes griefing. Like, if if you're doing something to where like people can't like use the auction house at all, it becomes griefing. But just let them like let the kids play. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know I, think, I had. I think what you said. Sorry, uh -huh. I think what you said about people undermining the preparation it required for vanilla is actually so true because it's not that the game mechanics themselves are hard, but people don't realize how prepared you have to get even for MC. Like people oh, are gonna yeah. try to get an MC week two with like a full rate of forty, dude. They are gonna get clapped, man. Like I don't think people understand. Yeah. There's gonna be healers like running on fumes with mana, like you know, twenty five percent of the way into the fight. Yeah, you know, it's it's just it doesn't. It's a lot harder well, yeah. than people even, even like, realize. In addition to that, I guarantee you're going to have like some more like like fresh casual guilds that maybe haven't played Vanilla WoW before. They're going to go into MC. Maybe it's like week five or week six. They finally got there and they're going to be like dousing runes like quintessence. What what the heck is this? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? How do we summon Ragnaros? This wasn't gonna, part like, of the you know, attunement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and one thing a lot of people don't talk about is Actually, there's a lot of habits that you've probably developed in retail WoW that are actually very, very bad in vanilla, like oh, precasting, like precasting on yeah. pulls. That's like horror. I mean, people oh, still do yeah, it, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But like in retail, like if you really want to like maximize DPS, right? And you're you're a caster, like you know, you're firing off that chaos bolt or whatever, like right when the timer hits like two or one second. But in vanilla, yeah. you do that, you're gonna pull aggro, you know, <laughs> kill the raid. <laughs> Yes, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, dude. Yeah. Dude, okay, I, I I remember the story. Uh so so on Veilstra is very similar to Baron Geddon. Like you know, Baron Geddon has uh the, the living bomb, Veilstraws has uh burning adrenaline. So I remember getting burning adrenaline, and, and this is like a, a little trick that you use to like not die with your world buffs if you get burning adrenaline on Veil. What happens is is basically you you have like instant cast spells, you have infinite mana regen already from uh from, from just fighting Veil. But you get burning adrenaline, mm -hmm. and after a certain amount of time, you blow up, right? You need to run out of the raid, but because you can instant cast spells, you can instant cast hearth, hearth out of the raid, and then log out. And because it's a debuff, debuffs keep ticking away while you're offline, uh, whereas buffs don't. So you you hearth, you're in and in, instant log out, wait 30 seconds or whatever, log back in. The debuff's gone, and then good. You can you can get summoned back to the raid. That's one way people do it. So I remember I did this one time, and DPS, 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 instant hearth, and I hearthed, and I just like sat there in the inn in Iron Forge, and I was like laughing about something, and I just I just brain for it. I just forgot that I had the bomb, <laughs> so I blew up and I killed everybody in the Iron Forge inn just because I could just complete brain for it. Like I didn't even think about it. So, uh, so yeah, that's just like stuff like that happens. I mean, I don't know. Like, if 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 I were to do that and get banned for it or something, I would be like, come on. Like, I I obviously didn't want to die with my world buffs. That's the whole reason I left. But yeah, hey, that's how I'm it goes. hoping they're lenient with griefing things like that. You know, because it's just like 
you're you're putting GMs that know about these bugs into a game that has these bugs, but back then the GMs didn't really like know about the bugs. So it's going to be interesting mm-hmm. to see how they deal with punishment for those kind of things. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Let them fight. I, exactly. I the can't boys imagine play. a world where stuff like that is bannable. Like, let's be like, if yeah. if they're banning for stuff like that, even if people are doing it intentionally, like it's hilarious. Come on, like it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> I'm the war. I'm the warlock that would drop infernals and and drop in the level low level zones or drop an infernal on a mailbox and banish it. And even though it was banished to infernals, like AOE fire immolate aura would still kill low levels like bank alts in the mailbox. I was that guy, man. Like, if I can't do that, I'm gonna be very upset. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. They ban people for a lot less nowadays. Yeah. So that's the thing. Yeah, we'll that's, see. Yeah, that's what I'm concerned about. Yeah. Well, uh, mm-hmm. it's 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 like a different dynamic. I don't know. I I hope they understand. Like that's one of the quirks of vanilla WoW. I I hope they get yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, so far it seems like we have a whole development team that's like very in line with it being classic and kind of yes. making it more hardcore RPG MMO fashion. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. They definitely get it. They definitely get it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it seems like they get it. So I'm very optimistic so far with everything I've heard. Like, I'm not like, oh, God, Blizzard's going to ruin Classic. Like, it, it really doesn't seem that way to me anymore. So, mm-hmm. yeah. which is really, really cool. Here, we're going to we're gonna take a couple more questions, guys, before we, uh, before we call it a night. But um, this one's from Patrick, and I think this is a really good question. Uh, I won't be able to dedicate enough time to Classic for rating. What class and professions could I roll that would provide the most benefit to a guild? Uh, I, I think that's something that is is for a lot of people the case, right? Like they, they might not be able to raid hardcore or whatever. They might not be on the cutting edge of everything, and that's fine. Uh, but they want to be in a guild. They want to be able to contribute. They want to make friends. They want to enjoy the social aspect of Vanilla WoW, the, the social aspect that Classic WoW offers that Retail WoW may not offer to you know the type of player that you are. Um, Herbalism. I think herbalism is really, really good. Alchemy is really, really good. Gathering professions in general are really good, but but I would say herbalism is is definitely the first one. Um, that's how, how do you that's guys feel? also what's so cool about classic, right? Because I've actually had I'm running my own classic guild, and I'm not advertising it by saying that, but I'm just saying I am. And there's there's like five separate people who are like, dude, man, I can't raid, but I want to let you know something. Like all I want to do is farm mats mm-hmm. and give them to you, yeah, to to help you guys achieve, you know, yeah. whatever, and like that's that's one way you can contribute and like enjoy an experience like it keeps you very social you can still do a yeah. majority of content you're like, still a part still of the really guild cool, but... you're still contributing well, and, even if you're not and those, people, those, those guys are, the people are, that... those are just as important like mm-hmm. if, if that's important 100 percent. and if those are the guys that if they ever show up to a guild dungeon run or a split run if they have time like they're getting loot like stuff like that if you're on the g if you're on the uh, on the officer team or the gym of the guild like you should recognize that stuff because i'm leaving the guild also yeah and those guys are going to be rewarded in some way i think or they should 100%. be at least yeah, absolutely yeah. but yeah definitely yeah. alkalism al- uh, or sorry herbalism in any gathering i think mining is pretty good too especially if you're a pvp guild if you can consistently mm-hmm. supply people with enough mats for like grenades mm-hmm. or good. let's say you're an engineer and you're just you're just making grenades and stuff for people you know yeah you could do that as well making sap you can- like you're a goblin engineer and you're making sap recharges for people who might be gnomish engineers like there, there's a lot there's a lot you, you can do <laughs> there's, there's a lot you can do uh you know with with a lot of professions to be able to contribute to the guild and, and help out other people um but but i would say gathering professions in general are, are really really valuable so yeah yeah herbalism yeah it's not much but it's honest work exactly just do a little <laughs> bit of farming <laughs> so yeah I, I think that was really good um mm-hmm. let's see hmm and then obviously herbalism, alchemy, if you want to like help a raid team, right? Because you're going to be supplying a lot of health pots and mana pots and flasks and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to pick a good one last here. Question? Yeah, I'm trying to pick a good one here. Uh, are you worried about high population PvP servers becoming too high pop? Like not having enough room and having queue times to get into servers? Imagine Tychondrius, but on Classic. I think this is the big question that's still on the table for blizzard for everybody right i yeah. think that you know or everybody says you know no sharding no this and that and, and i think that's the ideal situation right because i think everybody has a pretty bad taste in their mouth about how sharding works in retail wow uh so we're hoping that they find a solution now they told us they specifically when we were at blizzcon and we got a chance to go talk to the devs they sp- like they specifically told us that sharding was a temporary solution 
for the sake of the demo because they thought if you take a full ser full population server and put it into uh, Westfall and the Barrens, just, just dump everybody into two zones, that there was surely going to be issues. And if there's like a one-week demo or whatever, they didn't want to have a situation where people can't play during the one-week demo and it's like Blizzard, Lil W, like, you know, small indie company, whatever, right? So they just wanted to have a situation where they knew it was going to work. Um, and they said they were actively trying to find the best possible solution. So yeah. I, I think, hope that's I still the case. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, dude, there's no way you're going to fit 500 people, people in Tears Full Glades and have people level without sharding, right? Well, and that's, that's, one, uh, that's one solution. Some people say, like, okay, just for the starting zones, having sharding for the starting zones think, for, like, the first couple of days or whatever, and then, and then go from there. But I think it ends up creating another bottleneck, too. Now, the bottleneck's going to be bigger, right? In terms of... So, so, basically, you have the influx of players coming in, right? And you've got this big thing. But they're bottlenecked because there's only a certain amount of mobs and everything, and everybody's trying oh. to go through the bottleneck. Now, if you move that bottleneck down to, let's say, level 10 or whatever, and, and you start putting, you know, you only have it in the starting zone, that bottleneck's going to be a little bit bigger because people are going to level at different rates instead of everybody starting at level 1. You see what I'm saying? So, basically, by, by having it down there, it's going to stretch that bottleneck out a little bit, but it's still going to be another bottleneck. So then at, at what point does there's it stop? a lot of people in that next zone. Yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a whole thing. So, is it a solution? Possibly, um, but a lot of people are concerned about like the long term. Like, okay, are they gonna end up having sharding for the AQ40 event, and then all of a sudden there's two gongs, and it ends up being a whole thing, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, I mean, well, so you. It's not good. Yeah. These people are saying that like, don't, don't, we don't want sharding. We don't want sharding, dude. If you guys log in to Tears for Glades, and there are literally 600 other le level one undeads next to you. You're gonna bitch and you're gonna ask for sharding at that point. I like, uh, I think what do you my this is this is my kind of like thought process on it is I really would like for them to have a stress testing like stress test a launch and just everybody log in and just see what happens because that way the devs can see what happens that way the the community can see what happens no sharding and then with sharding and just see how it plays out. I mean, who knows, right? Who knows exactly yeah. how it's gonna go. Yeah, I think that's. I think, I think that would be cool. Be really important. I think stress I testing know. is really, really important I, going into the release. I, I think like more stress testing is better. Is better because they can stress test sharding. They can stress test maybe like different approaches to dynamic respawns. They can stress test different popula server population caps. Yeah. Like there's a lot of stuff that they can try. And actually, like who, who knows? They might have tested this stuff on the demo, and we just weren't aware of it. They might have already yeah. tested this. We have no idea. Um, but. I, I tend to like err on the safe side. I think more testing is better. Yeah, and so, you like to stay safe? I like to stay safe. Yeah, like we, we, we don't know if we're going to get a beta at this point, but uh, I think I I would really like to see one or at least one or two stress tests if there's no beta. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. we'll get a beta. I think so too. But actually, I heard I, I saw an interesting comment, and I don't know how much time we have left, but it was about how, what do you guys think if, uh, you think beta will kill the hype if it's, you know say too long I, I think that's probably a concern for blizzard like yeah. do you want to i i i like having I, I like the idea from from the standpoint of like let's do this you know mathematically go through and make sure it's really good i like the idea of having a long beta i i've said that from the beginning i, I think it'd be really cool to have a long beta um yeah. i think what blizzard's concern would be is just that like okay is the hype dead now is there a um what, what if they do a long closed beta under NDA or something where like people can't show videos and stuff of it? Maybe, maybe that won't kill the hype if that's the case. And they can actually go through and get like, um, they can go through and get like good data and good testing. And so it depends on that point. Like, are they going to, how, how good of testing are they going to really have if there's not like a ton of people on this and a ton of people under NDA, surely somebody's going to leak at some point. You know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah, I, sure. I think I think the big thing with the beta, what kills hype more than a length than the length of the beta, will be the scope of the beta. For example, if the classic WoW demo stayed open from BlizzCon to now, that wouldn't have killed the hype, regardless of how long it lasted, because ultimately there's still 45 levels plus of content that was not going to be accessible and that yep. people would be hyped up about. The big thing is the scope of beta. So if they are going to have a beta. Uh, the big thing to make sure they don't kill the hype is to not make it an open one to sixty raid, go all the way through Naxxramas, mm -hmm. whatever, because then you definitely detract from the mystique of vanilla. Yeah. Um, if you do a yeah. yeah, if you do a beta, probably a predefined level range, probably something relatively restricted. Um, 
maybe one to 30, maybe one to 40, whatever it may be. But beyond that, then you really start to take away from the allure and the mystery of, of classic. I, beyond I, hype, I very much agree with that. Yeah. Beyond hype. Do you think a beta would kill uh, maybe new like newcomers? Well, actually, the same. I was going to say, do you think it'll push away people from classic in general because they play the beta and they're like, Dude, this is way too hard, man. I, you know, it's taken me like, you know, seven hours to go from one to 10 or whatever, you know, like, do you think it'll push people away? But I, I was going to say like, those people were probably so, pushed away anyways. Yeah. Th those people mm -hmm. I think would quit early on anyway. I do yeah. think that there's a demographic out there of players, like new players that haven't played vanilla or classic before that if, if they have to sit and watch a streamer do it or watch YouTube videos, um, and they can't do it themselves along with the streamer, then they'll be turned away. Whereas if, if everyone is doing it for the first time with a full release and they can do it, they can experience it at the same time their streamer or favorite YouTuber is doing it, I think they're more inclined to stick around. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. I agree. Yeah. Guys, I think on that note, I think this was a very good episode. Sony, thank you so much for joining us, man. Uh, tips yeah, out, baby. Blast. Stay yeah, safe, TV. Know, Please, 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 please go follow these guys. Guys, if you're new here, please hit this channel with a follow as well. Go check out their YouTubes. Go check out their Twitters, all that stuff, Instagram, everything. Uh, please go follow them. And uh, I, I guess neither I, – I, I guess I'm going to continue streaming for just a little bit. Um, I, I don't. It's not going to be a real long stream tonight. We're going to look at some Vanilla WoW videos and stuff, but, but I'll go ahead and continue streaming uh, tonight for a little bit. And uh, thank you guys again for joining us for Classic Cast number 26. And we'll see you guys next week. Take it easy. Later, guys.